Survival House Network. Hey, somebody's crazy. Pop goes the weasel. Everybody knows the weasel blows. But popcorn, she pops real good. I eat popcorn. Everybody eats popcorn. She tastes real nice. Get yourself some now at our refreshment stand. What's up, freaks? Welcome to Behind the Mask, episode four. Yeah, welcome. We are, uh, I think, still kind of coming off of a off of a high from episode yeah. three. That great conversation with Leanne Curtis that we had. That was fun. I hope everybody got to listen to it. If you hadn't, go back and do it because it was pretty cool. Yeah, that was a real fun interview. Really enjoyed that and getting some good feedback on it too. And we appreciate that. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, keep the feedback coming, and of course, thank you again to Leanne for doing it. And we hope to do it again at some point here in the future. She was a lot of fun, and there's really no end to stuff that we could talk about with no. her, really. <laughs> and this show, we're actually uh, we're going to be joined a little later by uh, a couple people from Whore Happy Hour, uh, Chris and Dave. Chris and Dave. And uh, they've we're also, been yeah. like big supporters of ours and really kind to us and um so yeah we're really excited about having them on we got some switchblade sisters for you today yes we're gonna be uh, reviewing that and um first we're gonna be uh going into some news or exploitation news um do you have any hey you know what news eh not so much i got you know a few things that I'm excited about as far as, like, DVD releases, but sure. um, as far as news goes, I don't really have much right now. And the funny thing is, there hasn't been any news. I couldn't find anything. And then last night, probably around 11 o'clock at night or whatever, I was uh, surfing or whatever, and ended up finding um, that there was, like, some breaking news on the Evil Dead franchise, and I guess they're, uh, they're actually working on a new Evil Dead. And it's supposed to be a, a quasi remake, and I guess Sam Raimi is involved with this project too. So, um, which I don't really get quasi remake. Like we were talking about before, it's either a remake or it's not. I mean, exactly. If you're gonna call it Evil Dead, and it's, I, I mean, unless they're, you know, it's gonna kind of encompass like different parts of different, you know, the different movies, then okay. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I would. I wish they would just come out with a fucking another sequel, for God's sakes. Oh, I agree, and <laughs> I mean Sam Raimi's involved, which is good, and uh, I think it, they said a director has been named, which I don't think. Well, they haven't released it yet, of course, but uh, and it's also going to be low budget, which they're talking about. So uh, they're going to be casting right. in Michigan, Detroit. Um, so that's good, and the whole low budget thing. I mean, that's the way to go if you want to make an Evil Dead. Yeah, that makes me happy to hear that. I mean, low budget, I mean, obviously these days is like, you know, a couple million. Yeah. But even still, you know, uh, you know, oh, yeah, I mean, that. I'm glad to hear that. Exactly, so... Uh, I'm glad to hear that Michael Bay is not producing it. Oh, God, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. A bunch of garbage from Michael Bay, but mm. uh, that pretty much uh, wraps up our news set point or segment... Uh, Short and sweet. Short right. and sweet. I mean, that was big news, though, so, I mean... Oh, yeah. Can't argue with that. Definitely. Um, but, yeah, what do you want to get into? I'll go, I don't know, a couple things we're getting excited about, which, 
I mean, the things that I'm, you know, getting excited about have been a few uh, few DVD releases that I saw today. I mean, a couple of them, uh, they've been out for a couple months now, but I want to bring them up just in case nobody's, you know, heard about them yet. Uh, the first couple are coming from uh, Synapse Films, um, which they put out a lot of good stuff. Oh, like, yeah. You know, we reviewed on our first show, uh, Singapore Sling, um, that, <clears throat> that, excuse me, that Synapse put out. And... Uh, so yeah, the first one I got is a uh, Women in Prison triple feature. It's uh, presented by Mr. Skin and uh, Panic House Entertainment. And uh, they got three movies on here. Obviously, it's a triple feature. I just said that. Duh. But uh, the first one is Chain Heat with Linda Blair. It's, uh, you know, Linda Blair in prison, pretty much. Uh, you know, fighting against a uh, sleazy warden who's actually, I believe... Uh, Played by John Vernon from Animal House, uh, the Dean from Animal House. If you remember, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's been in like a shitload of stuff, um, but yeah, I believe he he played the warden in Chain Heat. Uh, so yeah, I, I have seen that one. Not for a while. I have seen that. And it was it was pretty entertaining. Um, the second one on that disc is Red Heat. And uh, basically, that's Linda Blair in a German prison mm. this time. Nice. Um, and then the uh, the third movie is called Jungle Warriors, hmm. and uh, women in prison in and the, the jungle. jungle. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Linda Blair was in that one though. It's all right. So, uh, so that was one um, that actually is available. Well, the day that we're recording this, July twelfth, it's uh, available today. Uh, so that's out there. You can find it now. Uh, another one is called The Dorm That Dripped Blood. Ooh. Um, it's a uh, Blu-ray DVD combo pack. Um, it's actually, it's got never before, it basically, yeah, it's a never before seen alternate version with, there's more gore, it says, different sound mix, additional scenes, and the uh, the transfer was actually created from a version that was thought to be lost for like 30 years. Uh, so that would be pretty cool to check out, and uh, that is available now. Okay, yeah, the last one I got uh, from Synapse is uh, called Embodiment of Evil. That's uh, another Blu-ray DVD combo pack. It's actually the third installment in the Coffin Joe series by uh, Jose Mojica Marin, and uh, the other two being uh, At Midnight I'll Take Your Soul from 64 and mm-hmm. uh, This Night I'll Possess Your Corpse from 67. And uh, I haven't seen this last one, but I, I watched a trailer for it. It looks fucking great. So I'm really excited about checking that one out. And uh, I'd like to see... I, I, I haven't seen anything uh, for it yet, but I'd like to see like a box set of all those Coffin Joe movies. I Oh, that'd be sweet. I dug them, you know. I thought they were pretty cool. And that, that dude's just fucking weird. Um, and yeah, that last one, The Embodiment of Evil, looks uh, looks pretty damn cool. Um, so check those out from, uh, Synapse Films, and then, uh, a couple real quick, just, uh, that are available now from, uh, Blue Underground, uh, Deep Red and Cat of Nine Tails by, uh, Dario Argento, mm. uh, have both been released on Blu-ray recently. I, I hear, I hear Deep Red looks phenomenal on Blu-ray, too. Oh, I'm sure it does. Um, so yeah, those are available now, and then a couple coming up here soon, um, House by the Cemetery, they're putting out on Blue Bay. Uh, Blue Bay. Blue, 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 Blue Ray. That'll be sweet. Uh, Lucio Fulci, of oh, course. Yeah. Uh, that comes out September 27th. And uh, Torso, which I have never seen, but I've always wanted to. Yep. Uh, they're releasing that on Blu ray on August 30th. So, is that a giallo flick or what? What is torso? Do you you know, know, I'm not sure if it was Italian or you know, I, I, I don't know. I need to look more into yeah, it. I, I just seen. I, I think I saw a trailer. Yeah, for it. I've seen a couple trailers for it, and they were like really funny trailers. They said torso probably 20 times in two minutes. Uh, I love that. One of those, you know, oh, yeah. uh, those are great. So uh, yeah, those are just a few things that I'm excited about. Hopefully, checking out here and uh, you know within the next couple months. And uh, I'm sure, you know, if I do get a hold of any of those, I'll be talking more about them on upcoming shows. So, Well, uh, yeah, one thing I'm excited about, I actually just found one for this show. Um, it's uh, it's actually called, it's called Machete Maidens Unleashed. Yeah. And it's a documentary about uh, exploitation B-movies of the 70s in the Philippines. 
And it's basically, um, I think it's the people that did uh, the movie Not Quite Hollywood, which was uh, Ozploitation movies, which uh, I think you could find that streaming on Netflix. Yeah, which, I believe it is, yeah. Which is a freaking phenomenal documentary. If you guys are into, like, you know, of course you're into exploitation horror, but uh, if you're into documentaries, give that a watch because that's a great one. Um, and this should be coming out July 26th. Um, it's a Dark Sky Films. And um, I don't know. I saw I saw the trailer for this a couple days ago, and it just I mean, it raked a sleaze. And uh, <laughs> you you saw it, Lush. Yeah, yeah. You just showed it to me recently. Okay. Yeah, it was. Uh, it looks fucking great. Yeah. yeah. It looked like a, a really fun documentary, and I mean, when you're dealing with that subject, you yeah. know, I mean, it's just going to be fun to watch, no matter what. I don't know. That's pretty much it. I ended up getting. Uh, the God's Bloody Acres in today, and they just sent that to me, um, Code Red DVD. So, pretty excited to watch that. I haven't watched that yet. It also has uh, the movie Tomcats, um, which I think is about like a bunch of dudes that pretty much just go around and uh, violate and rape. The one movie that I have watched recently was a uh, Abel Ferrara movie, which was called Fear City. And this movie was the movie after uh, Miss 45. Um, and this basically takes place in in um, New York City. This one does. Um, Tom Berenger is your main star. Uh, Melanie Griffith is in it. She plays a stripper. Um, Billy D. Williams is also in it. Billy D. Billy D. Coke 45. Oh, hell yeah, man. <laughs> but yeah, it takes place in... Uh, it takes place in New York City, and um, they work for some talent agency, uh, Tom Berenger does, which is basically, you know, he works for, or he's always all these strippers working for him, um, and he basically wh- whores them out to whoever, whichever strip club wants them. Uh, so he does that, and then, like, uh, there's some murderer out there that randomly is killing strippers because he doesn't agree with the, what they do, and this fucking killer is just hilarious. I mean, he's just some, you know average Joe White guy that knows martial arts <laughs> and he ends up killing like hookers and shit with like nunchucks and <laughs> just like a bunch of random moves and shit and it's That's just great. It's a cheesy little flick and uh, really sleazy I mean it's a New York uh, 42nd Street sleaze and um, I, I give it a watch especially if you're an Abel Ferrero fan um, but the only bad thing you watch on Netflix it is cut so uh, some of the kill scenes were cut which was really depressing because it could have been so much better. But um, if you end up finding an uncut version, yeah, give that a watch too. And uh, let us know what that was because I've only seen the cut version. So, But yeah, those few flicks for this week. Uh, what about you, Lush? Anything? Uh, yeah, well, actually, you know, before I get into what I watched recently, I wanted to jump back to uh, something I was excited about really quick. And sure. I kind of spaced off. Um, a movie that we've, we've mentioned on the show uh, a couple times before. A movie called The Super. Yeah. Um, good, like, New York indie horror movie. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that's listening that it is now available on DVD uh, on Amazon. Uh, so you can order it on there. I posted something on the page, uh, on our Facebook page about it a while back. Um, but I want to keep that fresh in everybody's heads to uh, to check that out because it looks really good. I'm, I'm planning on picking up a copy of it, hopefully... There's still some left. What they got out right now is called like the uh, Red Scare edition. Oh yeah. Um, which there's you the know limited limited release. Is, yeah, limited those? yeah limited release on those. So uh, get on that. Um, if you get a copy before I do, and I go on there when I'm able to get one, and it's sold out, I expect somebody to make me a copy That's of that. Right. <laughs> Be kind to your your co-host here. <laughs> um, but uh. No, yeah, that was just, you know, one thing that I uh, was real excited about. Um, You know, that that Red Scare edition has more stuff in it that, you know, they haven't shown before. I think there's a little more gore. Um, So, and it looks like just a really cool movie. I've heard nothing but great things about it. So, check that out, too. I'm I'm looking forward to this too. It looks kind of like a um, like a maniac type of movie, right? And well, yeah. When you said about you know uh, fear, uh, fear fear city, city yeah. kind of harkening back to the days of like you know Forty Second Street and all that. Yeah. That's what these these guys that made the movie. I, I believe it was uh, Evan Marco Giannis and uh, Brian Weaver. Okay, uh, were the directors of the movie, and uh, and that's what they were trying to get back to because that's kind of they they 
were real young at the time, I think, when yeah. that was all happening. But they, you know, they grew up and they, they vaguely, you know, remember it, I think. And uh, and that's just something that they love, you know, um, kind of like we do, you know, that, that era of, of film and, you know, shit like that. So they were trying to make the super feel like that era, you know, and I, I think, I don't remember if it takes place back then or if it's, you know, if it's current, but yeah. they made it look, oh, yeah. you know, they made it look a lot sleazier like it was back then. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited about checking it out. I'm still pissed that I haven't got to yet, but. Yeah, I'm looking um, forward to that too. Yeah, time, times is tough and I, uh. I haven't had extra money to spend on movies, but. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> but, uh, start, start selling plasma. Yeah, I might, man. I might go, might go donate a little sperm or something. That's right. <laughs> see that. No, I, you know, that process is really fucking excruciating. I've heard it takes really? like six months to get clear. Oh, you have to go through a background check and I'll oh, screw that. I wouldn't pass that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, but yeah, anyway, I just, I, I forgot about that and I just wanted to mention it. So there's that. Um, as far as what I watched recently, I got a couple here, uh, from 2009, a flick called Sweet Karma, uh, which I just, it's, uh, streaming on Netflix. I just watched it, um, within the past couple days here. It stars, uh, Shara, uh, Betchard or Beckard. I'm not sure how you say it. I believe she was a Playboy playmate. Mm-hmm. And, um, I very much believe that because she's very nice to look at. <laughs> um, and it was, uh, directed by Andrew Thomas Hunt. And, uh, it's kind of a, a little, it's a really good, it actually was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I was expecting just something goofy and, you know, real silly, but this was actually, a, had a lot more like serious of a tone to it than I thought. And it was pretty gritty and uh, pretty violent actually. Um, and it's basically the, the premise of it, this, uh, this Russian chick, she's a mute. And, uh, when I heard, you know, a mute, yeah, vigilante. Of course, thriller. I thought that, yeah, thriller, Miss cool 45, picture, yeah. Miss Forty Five. Yeah. You know, so maybe you know. I think they were just kind of giving a shout out to those movies, maybe. Yeah. And it wasn't a complete rip off of those. Um, well, Miss Forty Five, maybe. Well, no, 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 it wasn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, basically, what it is is uh, these uh, this chick and her sister. They live in Russia, and her sister signs up to uh, go to Toronto, Canada. To be a uh, house cleaner, and uh, I'm doing the finger quotes on the right. house cleaner thing. Uh, so she gets over there, and she ends up being like basically sold into uh, the underground sex trade in Toronto. <laughs> and ultimately, uh, supposedly, she ends up getting killed. So her sister basically goes through the motions. She signs up for this whole house cleaning thing, also, and goes over there. But she doesn't let the guys pick her up at the airport. She kind of dodges them. And takes off on her own and then goes out for revenge against all these people. And uh, and she starts just taking them out one by one. And like I said, it was, I mean, really good. I, it wasn't uh, one of your, you know, fun, goofy, you know, ones like that. It, it had, it was a more serious tone movie and it was, it was fairly gritty and violent. And, uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. So uh, check that one out. As I said, it's streaming on Netflix if you have Netflix. Um, if not, I mean, seek it out from a different, uh, seek out a different avenue for it, but it's definitely worth watching. And I saw something about that in Whorehound where, uh, like, uh, some of the best, like, uh, revenge flicks, and that was one of the newer revenge flicks that, uh, is definitely worth watching, they said, so. Yeah, yeah, most um, definitely. I, yeah, they haven't mentioned it in that, in Whorehound, so, you know, it has to be pretty decent. So. Yeah, yeah, I recommend it, um. And uh, the other one that I have is uh, Primal from uh, 2010. Um, believe it was Australian, uh, based on their accents. Put two and two together. That's right. Because I'm smart. <laughs> um, no, it, uh, directed by Josh Reed, starring Zoe Tuckwell Smith and Crew Boylan, among others. Um, they were two of the good looking chicks from the movie, so I just thought I'd mention them. Sure. Uh, well, Crew Boylan actually, I believe she was the uh, the blonde, and she gets she gets pretty ugly real quick in the movie. Nah. Baby, you just got real ugly, <laughs> <laughs> and she fucking does. Holy shit! Uh, but no, it's kind of a uh, I don't know. It was uh, hard to explain. I don't want to give much away from it either. But um, people kind of become. It almost felt like uh, 
God, there was different elements to it. It felt like a little bit of like Evil Dead with like a little bit of that movie uh, The Ruins. Yeah. With uh, you know something else thrown in there. It was kind of crazy. Um, but this like ancient fucking thing gets brought back and kind of possesses people but i don't know there's a big creature involved and there's i don't know all kinds of just madness going on sure and uh but it was it was an entertaining movie um there were points where i'm like okay bitch just hit her with the machete for fuck's sake already um you know don't just stand there and keep looking at her just (laughs) hit her come on um but you'll know what I'm talking about if you if you have seen or if you do see the movie. Um, you know, there was a couple points like that, but all in all, it, it was it was pretty fun, entertaining. Uh, another one that kind of reminded me of was like the Descent a little bit. It had a little Descent thrown in there too. Sweet. Um, so yeah, if yeah, that one also is streaming on Netflix. Um, I, I'm pretty sure our. our Friends at Horror Happy Hour, Dave and Chris. I'm pretty sure they have a review, uh, a video review of that. Okay. Um, so check that out. Um, they, they'll, they'll. I think they get a little more in depth uh, into it than I, than I'm going to here. But um, I just want to mention that. Yeah, I recommend it. You know, it's worth a watch. Um, some decent blood and gore and stuff. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it just depends on your taste. I don't know. I, I would say maybe watch it before you buy it. Yeah. Because um, some people might not care for it much, but. Um, but I think it's definitely worth at least one watch. So check that one out too. And that I think is about all I got. Yeah. One one other thing I wanted to mention, I ended up uh, picking up Hobo on Blu-ray. Oh yes. Too. And, uh, I have yet to watch it, but, uh, I mean, I, I, I watched a few scenes and it just got me turned on again. I, I forgot how much this movie is. I mean, this movie's fucking great and it looks, it looks beautiful in Blu-ray and everything. And, um, I'm really excited to check it out. So uh, definitely, that's another that's another thing I'm excited about. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, we keep kind of coming back to that, don't we? But uh, that's all right. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, this wanna, will, yeah, this will probably roll us into a break. Get into a little break here. Um, oh, there was something I was going to mention. Something else. Uh, do I don't know. Let's go into a fucking break. Yeah, this I'll, is, I'll get my shit together here. <laughs> I think this might actually be rolling us into uh, this our segment with a red rocket talking our music. Yeah, yeah. We'll get so, into a little metal. Little, you know what? I mean, it's kind of all kinds of different stuff we right. talked about with red rocket this time. So exactly. So yeah, come back, listen to a little metal, and you're listening to Behind the Mask. Enjoy. Are you a hippie? Well, you might say so. Right on. You're beautiful. Let me tell you something, baby. You must have heard of the Vietnam War. They turned me into a murdering machine. Ah! Now you know why I bum around. Trying to run away, run away from this stinking world. A push on the button and we are forced to run to our deaths. A push on the button and we shoot people. A push on the button and we are turned into wild animals. Next time I see you, I'll bust your ugly faces open. I'm looking for a place far away from everything. A place where I can live with a bunch of people who think like me. An absolute free life in an absolutely isolated place. Far away from this civilization and culture of violence. Without clothes, without governments, and without orders. I know these creeps, they're after me. Murderers! From now on, we're one family. We'll be free. Freedom! Free! Free! The only sounds that are coming out of this place will be those of song, joy, and laughter! Man... How does it feel to be completely free at last? Man, I feel really turned on. World, you're so full of shit. You're so badly contaminated that it's impossible to find a corner free of smell. Sharks! Shark! What's going to happen to us now? Shit. This is a really bad scene. We're in a very serious situation. All these bloody creeps around isolated island no food nothing no water 
The girls will go mad. We're going to dry up in the sun. We are going to rot away. You're going too far, baby. Don't give me any more of your bullshit. Cool it. Big shit. Shut your ass. I hate you! The day of reckoning will come. I'll kill ya! He will murder you! You will be doomed. You will destroy yourself with your own hands. You fools. Stop pushing buttons. You fools. 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 All right, folks, welcome back to Behind the Mask. Hey, what's up, guys? Here with the Lush, the River Man, and your boy, the Red Rocket. Hey, guys, what's up? So, uh, what are we going to be talking about this week, Red Rocket, uh, music-wise? Uh, music-wise, um, the biggest thing for me, um, I think technically this information was released a couple weeks ago, but we've yet to talk about it, is the uh, Lou Reed and Metallica collaboration album. Have you guys read about that? No, I haven't. Oh, I haven't. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a pretty big story, so uh, that'll probably be the, the main highlight for me. But other than that, I wanted to touch on... Uh, uh, the long-awaited 10 years plus in the making Anthrax record, you know, has a release date. They released the album art. Uh, they released a track from that. I'm a big Anthrax fan and wanted to talk about that. It's it's pretty bitchin'. Um, as far as reviews, I don't really have anything to review. I have one thing I'm dying to go check out that I wanted to, that I've kind of listened to bits and pieces of. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Devin Townsend from Strapping Young Lad. No, no. I've, heard, I've heard of Strapping Young Lad. Okay. He's a very eclectic musician. He's done so many different styles of things. And his big thing now is he's got something called the Devin Townsend Project. And he's made basically six records that kind of go together. And he's released two at a time and a few years apart. And he's kind of released the last parts of it. And it's very, very, very different stuff. We'll get into that. Um, When's that coming out? You said this week? Oh, well... <clears throat> It, technically, it's out. Yeah, it just came out. But. Okay. Anyway, those are the big ones. There's a couple little other things I can throw in there, but I don't know. I could. <laughs> Sorry if I don't have much flow, guys. I'm trying to. Oh, oh that's right. cool, man. Okay. Um. Anyway, what? I guess what? What do you What have you been listening to lately? And what's really? Oh, you know what? You know, I'm really happy that you know. I think last time we talked, and it's probably um, aired on the last podcast. I told you I hadn't reviewed anything because I hadn't really been in a very much of a band mood, it, whether that's rock or metal or anything. I've been listening to a lot of Josh Groban and, and vocal music. So I've been like, <laughs> I've been less inspired to uh, write stuff on guitar and more inspired to sing in the shower. That's what I've been doing the most of. <laughs> Um, no, no. Singing, singing a lot of ra- you raise me up, but uh, but no. But this week, actually, a couple of days ago, I finally got hit in the nuts once again, and I just you know those old Pantera records and those old though they just started sounding good to me. So I've been rocking out a lot of stuff like that, and it's it's getting me pumped. And now I'm on that. I'm back in that mode again. I hope so. And like I said, actually, you know what? I probably credit Devin Townsend for doing it because I've listened to about half of each one of the, cause they came out the same day. He releases two simultaneously and I've listened to about half of each one and it kind of kicked me in the nose a little bit. So maybe that's it. That's so good. Like I said, that needs to happen every once in a while. Yeah. yeah and you know what? I like that balance. You know what? I want to go a few weeks listening to nothing but Enya and Josh Groban soon. <laughs> that's fine. And then that way, you know, when I come back full circle, it's even stronger the second time around, you know, the oh, next yeah. time around. Yeah. So you got to have well, that balance. It's funny you say that because uh, Lush and I had that balance a few weeks back. We went to the Toe the Wet Sprocket show here. Uh, <laughs> I saw that. I saw show. that. Yeah, that was and you, great. Got to meet yeah, the t- band and everything, and it was uh, it was a great time, man. Oh yeah, yeah. I just saw that as an outsider. I saw some pics you guys posted, and whatever, and you know, Todd. As long as I've known you, you've been like this '90s alt rock kid, and you know, to be honest with you, I've never been into it. I don't even know who the West Rocket are. I don't even know their hit songs that they had. Yeah. And you, you'd know them if you heard them. You'd know them. Well, you know, I need to look into it then. But I mean, I know Todd's been talking about them since day one. 
Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I keep calling you by your first name. My bad. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm not in the groove, man. I told you. I'm just not even here. This is like broad daylight and stuff. It's not normal for me, but... That's all right. Um, I, think, I think we've been... We've kind of done that, you know, like a, a shitload of times now on, you know, other other people's on, shows and, you know... Uh, yeah. So every everybody, I think, knows who Riverman and the Lush are. Yeah. Batman and Robin are unmasked. But, yeah. uh... Yeah, ever since I've known you, you've been Mr. Toad the Wet Sprocket, and, um, gosh, who else? Like, no, you never liked, uh, Soul Asylum, did you? But crap, yeah, like, I did. I liked Soul Asylum. <laughs> I liked Better Than Ezra. Yeah. I liked all those. Jim Blossoms. Was, Jim Blossoms. Jim Blossoms. That was it. I was looking yeah. for Jim Blossoms and Better Than Ezra. So you were all about that stuff, and, you know, it's still not my thing. I think the best, the best 90s band from that era, in my opinion, is Live. I'm a huge, Ed Kowalczyk fan. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah, they were good. I love Live. Yeah, well, I just think Ed Kowalczyk, he's still, even though they're, you know, not really in their heyday, dude, that dude's one of my favorite vocalists. It's almost, he's almost like a country singer in an alternative rock band, he, you know, his style, but he's really good. But anyway, talk about that concert. I kind of want to know about it, you know? Well, oh, it was just, I mean, it, you know, it's, we, we, we were both like really into those guys, you know? And so it was just like a step back into the fucking nineties for us. You know, it was great. Um, what, what was the venue like? They played small? at a, a small little venue uh, yeah. downtown. Intimate, intimate setting. Yeah. And we, uh, I mean, we were front row, of course. Yeah. Right there. up in front of the stage. I mean, we had their balls sweating our mouth. Let's just say that. <laughs> it was that close and. They were playing pantless? Okay. Well, we were hoping they would, but uh, <laughs> no. But, I mean, it was just all around. It was a, it was a blast, and then... Um, yeah, they had a good... They, I think I thought they played a pretty good set list, mm-hmm. um, you know, from throughout their, you know, career. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, it was just a really, really good time. Super nice guys. We got to talk to them, you know, a little bit after the after the concert and stuff. And mm-hmm. um, How did... Um, how did it come that you guys were able to, you know, it's a small venue, so it could have been one of those things where they were just like, we're going to be at the bar drinking, you know? Oh, yeah. And they were, yeah, they pretty much just came out, like, where the crowd was standing during the show. After the show was done, those guys came out to where the crowd was standing and just kind of hung around and took pictures and signed shit for people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. really, really, really cool. Speaking of pictures, you know, like I said, I, I'm not real familiar with them or a lot of those bands in depth. But when I saw the picture posted up on your guys' Facebook, the first thing I said was, these guys met Woody Allen? <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a like Mr. Sweet. Randy. It's a Mr. Randy Gus, the, the, uh, drummer. the drummer for Toad. You know, Super, and this... That guy's a sweetheart, man. No, this is... I mean, this isn't meant to slide anybody, but it's crazy how time flies by. And I looked at that picture of that gentleman, and I didn't see the other any pics of the other guys, but it's weird because 90s rock existed when I was a kid, and it's like, I look at the picture now, and it's like, when did the 90s rockers get old? Oh, yeah. You know? Because they just... They're now, they're just like, you know, middle-aged guys, and I just... Like I said, that wasn't a slide. It's just kind of a weird kick in the face. Like, wow, we're all getting old. What the heck happened? But I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah. They, those guys were, were super cool. You know, I, I told uh, the guy that you're talking about, Randy, I, you know, was kind of telling him, you know, how, you know, like how kind of sentimental, you know, their music is to me. And he was like, oh, fuck, man. That's why, you know, that's why we come out and, you know, play these shows and stuff every so often. And, he get, ended up giving me a big hug after after we were done talking. He was super cool. Do they still release albums? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They just put out like a new... Um, well, it's, it's kind like of a, a new album slash greatest yeah, hits Yeah, it was album. like a greatest hits, but they had a few new tracks on it. Oh, well, uh, we'll pitch it for them to our, you know, millions of loyal... Yeah, well, they had a they had a song called All, All I Want. And so this new uh, disc that they put out is called All You Want. And it's you know some of their some of their hits and uh, a few new tracks. So yeah, if you're into that you know that '90s stuff, if you dig Toad the Wet Sprocket, check it out. So uh, what else, what else you been uh, listening to or uh, excited about? Hey, uh, you know, like I said, <laughs> I'm just starting to get back into the swing of it this week, and so I've been listening to nothing but the nostalgic stuff. Literally, I listened to Pantera all day long yesterday, and I listened to. God, what was I listening to the day before? I think I was listening to God Hates Us All, actually. 
Um, you know what? I like that album more than I used to. I don't know what happened. I think ever since I saw them in L.A. that last time, and they played mm-hmm. one of the X Exile off of it, I'm like, wow, I never realized how cool this was. But anyway, so, you know, I'm just kind of getting back in the swing of things, and as far as buying new music, I'm probably going to go out tonight and pick up either one or both of those Devin Townsend CDs. But, you know, we can start there as far as talking. Um, anyway... The Devin Townsend Project, he's had a solo project, he's had Strapping Young Lad, he's had, you know, yada yada, tons of stuff. This is technically the Devin Townsend Project, and the whole thing about it is, like I said, he's released, there's six total albums in the whole scheme of things, and he releases two simultaneously at a time, and they've come out a few years apart, and this is the final two. And each record is a completely different style. I mean, like, totally different. And, you know, a lot of people know him just as this extreme metal guy, if you've ever listened to Strapping Young Lad and things like that, yeah. um, with a sense of humor. But some of this stuff really shocked me. I didn't really know what to get into. You know, first you have Dest- Destruction, which, by the way, the album art, they look totally different, like different logos, different album art. They're just totally different. But Destruction's really wacky and crazy. It's production. It's experimental. It's got a lot of a weird sense of humor to it. Um, might not be your casual music listener's cup of tea because it just takes a different kind of set of ears, you know. I it's kind of my thing, but you got to be open to that, you know, out of the box type of writing. But it's really heavy. Um, Ghost though is the one that actually grabs me because technically I was still in that you know mellow vagina stage listening to yeah. music like that. And this is totally an ambient record, a la Enigma. Uh, mythos, you know, crud like that. And it's really, really beautiful. I mean, it's just, I feel like, you know, you know, when you go to like the grocery store and they have those like song selectors, the sounds of Celtic. And oh, yeah. I, oh man. It's like, I'm listening to one of those. It's just so cool. It's the return but, to innocence, right? Oh man. But bet, but it's so, well, I'm not gonna say better than that. I love return to innocence, but you know, <laughs> but it's really, really good. And so, I've yet to delve into the the previous four, but I've just kind of read sort of overviews about each album, and I'm just I'm kind of excited to sink my teeth in all of them. I I have mad respect for it actually that he's not hiding behind a barrier or a boundary of you know what he can genre wise because the say, guys yeah it's you know, a pretty pretty wide range of stuff he's covering there. Oh my gosh! It's so in the the first set which I've not like I said listened to. The first one, I guess, was straight up kind of alternative pop, like some weird hybrid, but, you know, none of it's really conventional. And the second one was completely different. But anyway, I'm, I think I'm going to start here and work backwards is what I'm going to do because I'm really into what I've been listening to. Um, have, you, uh, have you checked out the new Iced Earth album? <laughs> no, man, I got to be honest with you. I'm not into the whole power metal thing. Man of War, dude. <laughs> Ro- rockers shouldn't wear loincloths. <laughs> you know, I, I just, they look like they should be out hunting for their kin, you know, and not on stage. I, I don't know. And they're all oiled up and they got like their six pack apps. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they don't anymore. I haven't seen them now, but I've just seen some of that old album artwork. Iced Earth. Why am I picking on Man on War? You brought up Iced Earth. Iced Earth. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's okay. You know, they're power metal. They're the stuff that was influenced by a lot of the stuff I love, like Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. Um, so it's got a lot of those elements, but I don't know. It's I can listen to it, but it's nothing I've really sank my teeth into. But that's the thing about that stuff that came from Britain back in the 70s. is It branched off and inspired so much. You got thrash metal, you got power metal, you got everything, and it all kind of came from, like, Priest and stuff like that. So I don't know. It's, it's all right. You're just trying to get Richard Christie on the show. That's right. You know I love Richard Christie. <laughs> well, the thing is, I, yeah, I mean, I totally would have Richard Christie on there. I mean, I like the stuff he did with Chuck Schuldner, but anyway. Well, well, I also want to say uh, I got you guys a few gifts. Um, I don't want to talk about them on the show. I got, I went to the, the dollar store. I got, I got, or, uh. watched their a PM Dawn album. Oh, holy Lord. <laughs> for, for a dollar. And, uh. <laughs> It's uh nice. You know, uh, we're both little uh, PM Don PM Don fans, so uh, um, oh, yeah. might be a little excited about that. And um, Red Rocket, I uh, I sent you a text of what I got you. Uh, Allison Chains uh, VHS, the live facelift uh, VHS. 
Yeah, the facelift light. I was excited when you showed me so, that. I mean, yeah, I, I got that for a dollar or whatever, and it goes on like eBay for like fifteen, sixteen. You know, they never. To, like, yeah, they never released it on DVD. You know, I never owned it, and I've never actually seen it. And I don't even have a VHS player, but I will find one. Well, so, don't end up selling it. If you end up selling oh, it, you got to give me the profits. But I, I thought. <laughs> That's a gift. <laughs> well, sentimental, dude. I thought I thought you would keep it, you know. And enjoy no, it, it is. Cause I'm a huge it. AIC fan, man. That's yeah. our band going way back. And yeah. you, dude, don't talk to me about selling stuff. I have a picture shaped "Jump in the Fire" Whiplash Metallica record in my closet that I could probably sell for about fifteen hundred dollars, but I don't because I'm such an Uber fan, and I don't even have a record player, you know. Yeah. So I'll I'll cherish that VHS. I'm down with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, River. Yeah, no problem. No, I was getting the press. That's, that's decent. What a guy. Even though I probably made copies of both of them. <laughs> <laughs> or we, oh, you man, you uh, made an old school VHS copy where the quality oh, gets yeah. crappier and crappier each time you... <laughs> yeah. Pretty the good. tracking, adjust the tracking. <laughs> yeah. It's auto-tracking. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I can't wait. It's it's so cool, but I remember, like, when I will get the chance to watch it, I'll be like, man, this looks like shit. Like, it's, it's like VHS. is like, it's, I haven't watched the VHS in so long, it's crazy. After getting used to watching Blu-rays here this past couple months, even DVDs are starting to look. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, man, this looks grainy. I can't see that guy's pores. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, but man, anyway. um, I'll, have to, I'll have to shoot that to you here pretty soon. Yeah, well, I'll be in town. Um, i got to talk to you about that outside of the show, but I've kind of got my itinerary scheduled for um, August, September. But um, anyway, we will go into the next topic because we've got to move okay. along. Uh, while we're on the topic of metal, let me go right back. We're going to hit the anthrax topic, uh, worship music. You know, I told, I've talked about it before, about the difference in anthrax singers. They've had a lot of drama. They can't seem to keep a singer, and a lot of people think they just kind of jank around these people at the mic and, you know, treat their singers like crap or whatever. But, you know, you got your classic era, which is Joey Belladonna, that you're among the living, your persistence in time and crap like that. And while it's good, I've always been a much bigger fan of the John Bush era from the 90s where, you know, I I don't know, you know, for him being a replacement singer of somebody that was part of the core lineup, John Bush gets a lot of respect, you know, unlike in a lot of situations like that. But in the 90s, they reinvented their sounds. They The the songwriting was more serious, whereas the 80s stuff, if you guys are familiar, kind of had comical elements. Well, I, yeah. I yeah. loved, uh, my favorite song of Anthrax is The Madhouse, and I love that music video, too. Man, Madhouse is a great track. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I like a lot of that older stuff. But if we're going to talk about vocalists, I like John Bush way more than Joey Belladonna. And Joey Belladonna, he's the only guy in Thrash that tries to sing like Bruce Dickinson, that operatic type of thing, you know? But I don't know. His voice kind of sounds forced at times to me, but that's not dogging him. John Bush, you know, he's back from the Armored Saint days, which in Armored Saint, he did more of that 80s thing, actually, than he did in Anthrax. Armored Saint is badass, if you guys... You guys should check out uh, a couple of records he did back then. They were great. So, yeah, with the Joey Belladonna, you had the uh, sort of comical themes. You had, you know, you had they wrote songs about horror movies and Stephen King novels and things like that. You know, it was, it was very fanfare, too. Actually, right up the alley of this program, you know. But the 90s stuff came a, a shift. The songwriting was a little bit more... I don't. I mean, I don't know if "mature" is the word, but yeah, they were. It was serious subject matter, and their sound shifted because it was almost like an alternative hard rock. And I know that doesn't really sound appealing, but I think they made their best records and they wrote their best songs during this era. Their first album with John Bush, um, "Sound of White Noise," is my favorite. Yeah, like you know, he kind of his voice is really gruff, and it's it's hard to describe. It's really gruff. It's not. Uh, you know, he's not trying to go all out there like Joey Belladonna, but he's a great, great vocalist and very unique. I mean, you can't miss him if you hear him. Um, but anyway, I love the few records, the four, four records or whatever they did with him. And now they're back with Joey Belladonna. Didn't have a whole lot of high hopes. There's been three different names, actually technically four if you count Corey Taylor, that were potentially involved with the making of this record that have gone in and out. Wow. And, yeah. Well, wasn't, wasn't Corey Taylor in talks for... Uh, um 
What other band was that? Velvet Revolver. Velvet Revolver. He, he auditioned for them, and it just they jammed a little bit. And they actually have recordings out there, is what they say of of their jams together. But you know, I guess they say that not everybody was feeling it. And pretty much, I think it hinted at Slash was the only one that wasn't digging it. I think everybody else was pretty cool with it. But, you know, I think Slash outvotes everybody. His oh, vote counts that, for... Dude. I'm Corey sure Slash... Taylor is the best voice in the business, pretty much. I mean, if you're... T- yeah, in, in modern day, kind of more commercial rock, it is. Yeah. You know, commercial rock's not a bad thing. People are scared of that term in the underground metal. But it's not if it's done right. There's nothing wrong with, you know... I like Stone Sour, you know? Oh, I agree. And it is total radio rock, and this is not necessarily a bad thing. But we're getting a little off topic. Um, so, Enter Joey Belladonna, they already had this album written for the most part with a, a yet a new singer, Dan Nelson. Things didn't work out with him. They booted him. It's been like 10 years in the making. They got him back, Joey Belladonna. And I heard a new track. It's called Fight Him Till You Can't. Uh, Fight Him Till You Can't. I'm sorry. you got to get the slang in there. <laughs> and... It's total classic Anthrax. If you guys look at the single artwork, it's back to the, the comic-drawn animation. And the song itself is about zombie apocalypse, so it's nice. classic Anthrax. And I listened to the song, and man, they just they nailed it. They're one of these thrash bands that has made a record that harkens back to their old days, yet while you know creating a little bit of that modern production, it's just perfect. And nobody ever nails that nowadays. And it's so good. It's You can f- download it for free right now. And I'm not sure if it's like the final master or whatever, but it's super good. And I've, I've been listening to it every day. And as much as I wasn't as big of a Joey Belladonna fan, he's awesome on the track. And huh. I don't know. Definitely listen cool. to it. It's really, really good. Um, ugh, before we get into the big thing, let's. I just want to go over a couple things. Just little news tidbits. Staying with metal. Um, I talk about Testament quite a bit. Paul Bostoff, he's, he started out in Forbidden. He replaced Dave Lombardo and Slayer for uh, the 90s records, which I love, Divine Intervention. Uh, very, very, very underrated drummer. He's now in Testament. He was on the last Formation of Damnation record. He's still in the band, but I guess due to some illness that they haven't revealed. I don't know if he got injured or he's ill. He can't record the album, so they've recruited Gene Hoagland. He's sort of the go-to guy in the business. He uh, He's now in Fear Factory. He was in Strapping Young Lad, um, Death Ant. He's been so much stuff. I mean, he's literally... I'm trying to compare him to, like, an actor. He's like Samuel Jackson yeah. of the heavy metal world. <laughs> uh, nice. He's, he's everywhere. He actually played on Testament's Demonic album as well. Um, so he's been really everywhere. And he's known as the human drum machine. And the guy double kicks like nobody's business. But anyway... And two of the tracks are being done by Chris Adler from Lamb of God. So it'll be interesting to see what he sounds like with a uh, different drum production that's not that tinny <laughs> drum. What have they been up to, Lamb of God? Anything? They, uh, they're, they're in the process of recording a new album right now. Oh, I, think it's supposed to be out, I think it's supposed to be out in the fall. Hmm. I was reading about it not that long ago. I'm really excited about it. I love Wrath. That's kind of a kind of taking a detour, but, man, I, I love Wrath. I, yeah, I, never, I never really got into Wrath. It is way better than Sacrament, man. Sacrament was just so... Uh, what's the word? It was just... It was overproduced, for sure. It was overpolished. And, you know, it's like there was good songs in there. The whole... I mean, it's like every song could have been good, but they're just missing something. I don't know. I don't understand. But Wrath was back to the raw thing, and I really, really liked it. Anyway, so... Looking forward to that. Kind of looking forward to hearing the Testament and those two tracks with Chris Adler, too. I think it'll be interesting. Hmm. Cool. So what's your uh, what's your big thing for the show? The big thing is the, the Metallica Lou Reed collaboration. Yeah. See, uh, a couple months back, Metallica had put on their website, oh, you know, we're going into the studio in the month of May, and we're going to knock out a recording project in, like, two weeks. A first for Metallica. You know, it takes them five years in between albums. Yeah. And um, it's like, we'll see if we can do it. And it was like top secret. And, um, of course, speculation in the forums like, oh, it's going to be, you know, they're all big four happy right now, all jerking each other off as much as I love that. (laughs) Um, Everybody's like, oh, it's going to be a collaboration, like uh, maybe an album of them playing each other's songs or something. Because they had said, they questioned Kirk Hammond and he's like, 
because they were asking him, is it a Metallic album? He's like, it's not really a full-fledged Metallic album. He was kind of like giving answers, but not giving answers. So it's like, okay, we'll be like another covers album, a Garage Inc. 2, or a collaboration with Big Four, or a collaboration with Dave Mustaine. And so everybody just knew it was going to be something in that realm. And then when they came out and said it was a collaboration album with Lou Reed, it was just like jaws dropped. Yeah, nobody like that's, expected that That's that not... Shit. Yeah, that's... Right now, they're doing the whole Big Four nostalgia thrash trip, and it's like Lou Reed, really. But they... When they got inducted into... Well, they got inducted into the Rock Hall, I think, two years ago, and then I think it was last year, they played the anniversary show at Madison Square Garden, and Lou Reed came out on stage and played um, played with them. And I guess that sparked a bit of a friendship, and... I guess it's an out. The, the, I didn't know a whole lot about it, but I read it. More information was released, and it actually has me kind of excited, intrigued, if anything. I don't know anybody that's not at least interested. But Lou Reed already basically wrote all the music for the fo- first part, the basic blueprint of everything. Mm-hmm. Because I guess it's the score work for a European play called Lulu, based on German storybooks or something to that effect, some German German novelist's work. And he wrote this stuff, and then he got together with Metallica in their studio, and then they took his blueprint, and then they jammed on it and metallica it. But as far as... There hasn't been too many details about it. I'm... I'm I don't know. I think Lou Reed's doing the vocals exclusively, but they haven't said. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure the lyrics are all Lou Reed. So I don't know. It's that's crazy. It's going to be weird. I'm, I'm kind of excited about Metallica being involved in a project where, you know, they can obviously go into it and knock it out in a few weeks because somebody else is at the helm. It's like, hey, I got this stuff. What can you guys do to it? Um, from what they're describing it, I don't ever trust Rolling Stone. Ever since they described Saint Anger to me, um, I mm-hmm. never trust Rolling Stone. I, the way they guys, the way those guys described how that album sounded when they got their advanced what, listen. The, the, what it sounded like it was made in the fucking garage. No man, they said. I remember listening to reading Rolling Stone. The album hadn't come out yet, and they had one of their uh, columnists get an advanced listen, and he was sitting there talking about how it sounded just like Injustice for All. Oh God, it's something. No. <laughs> and so I don't trust Rolling Stone. But anyway, these guys are saying that it's. You know, it's not like either one of them, per se. It's this really weird mesh that really, really works at the same time. But I, you know, at first I'm thinking, okay, if he wrote the blueprint, if Lou Reed wrote the blueprint for the stuff, I'm thinking of it as me as a musician. If somebody handed me sort of a rough draft, okay, now put your stamp on it. It's like you can only do so much with it. You know, it's at this pacing, and it's like, okay, I'm just going to add some color. But, no, I guess they really went off with it, and they kind of really collaborated. And I guess it's balls it out thrash at times. It's it's Sweet. heavy. It's It's got the elements of all of it. So I don't really even know what else to say. I, and there's not a, a date out for it to come out yet. Um, well, we'll keep you uh, we'll keep you all updated on the Facebook page then. Yeah, that's nuts, that's man. And I'm excited to get a little bit of Metallica early because it's not going to interfere with the new album. I'm sick of this five year absence stuff, but uh, well, you know, something to hold you over. That's yeah, right. something. You know, I mean, and the thing is, if something happens and it sucks, you can't totally get mad at Metallica. It's like yeah, it's not really a Metallica <laughs> record, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like it's like why couldn't they did that with Saint Anger? Like oh, let's just call it this. But, um, and by the way, I'm sorry to finish it off. They haven't, I'm curious as what they're going to call it. Is it, they're calling a collab album, but is it actually going to be called Metallica and Lou Reed? Or are they going to have some new moniker? I don't know. Whatever. But Met- Metalla Reed. <laughs> Met- Metalla Reed, uh, I guess. But, um, they can yeah. pay me, they can pay me for that later. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that that was the biggest one. That's the one I'm still thinking about and got my mind on. I, I want them to announce a release date really bad. Well, hell yeah, I think that'll be fuck interesting. If if anything, you know, if nothing else, it's going to be interesting to listen to. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Oh man, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, this is kind of off topic. I was just thinking about this when you're talking about Metallica. Remember uh, back in the day, we went to the comic book store and you bought a Metallica comic book. Yeah, dude. And then they like compressed 
the entire the entire '80s Metallica biography into like three pages, and I remember it's like, "Hey, we're on top of the world. We're touring Europe for the first time." Cliff Burton died in a bus accident. <laughs> then they're like all then they're all on the side of the road or at uh, the scene of the accident, <laughs> and it's like they have that big picture on the end page. It's like they're already coming to terms, and they're all holding each other, looking at the sky with the bus that tipped over <laughs> to the left of them, it, and, Cliff, and Cliff Burton is in the sky smiling at him. Yeah, his face or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it's like, wait a second, there's no grieving process? The bus tips over, he's dead? They don't even call the cops. Nobody's even there yet. And they're already like, you know what? Cliff's somewhere. Look down on us. Well, back on the road. <laughs> back on the road. Um, <laughs> it's the most ridiculous. I still have that in the rap and everything else. I wonder if that's worth anything, dude. Well, it's unofficial. It's by Rock and Roll Comics. It wasn't like Metallica stamped or nothing. Oh, uh, yeah. No, it wasn't. And I like... I'm dying to find the next issue. They got to be rare. The next issue, the next issue's New Kids on the Block. <laughs> it's, it gives me a little teaser uh, at the end of it. I'm like, I want to read more. It's like Goosebumps, where they give you like the first 20 pages of the next New book kid. at the end. Hell yeah, dude. New Kids on the Block. That'd be like one page, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, I, th- I like to think that we're like the New Kids on the Block. Everybody has their favorite. You know, I'm Donnie, the bad one. I want to be anyway. <laughs> Donnie. Wait. I'm, I'm Donnie and I'm Joey. I'm the cute one and the bad one. Uh, I, I'll take Joey. You can be Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> was there a was there a drunk one? <laughs> <laughs> if there was, that's me. I'm in. Um, crap, man. You know, there was one other thing I kind of forgot to touch on. I probably you know shouldn't be talking about it because it's kind of little in compared to the Metallica story. I should have threw it in sort of with the Anthrax sure, track. Throw just, it in. Go ahead. It's just talking about another track, but they finally released uh, a new Dream Theater track, one teaser, because that's been a big thing in the music world because Mike Portnoy left and Enter Mike Mangini, and, and everybody's curious, oh, is it going to go back to the classic, you know, early 90s Dream Theater sound before kind of the metal influence took over and started, you know, dominating the progressive element just a little bit, and that was heavily attributed to Mike Portnoy's love of it. So everybody's kind of excited, actually. They released it. It's very much, it is very classic Dream Theater. kind of reminds me of uh, uh, Falling Into Infinity and maybe just a little prior to that. But, and it gives me a lot of high hope, but the song, I don't know, this, there's moments where I kind of find myself drifting off and losing myself. You ever do that when you're listening to a song and you find yourself paying attention to something else? Like in your room. Time. Or humming a different song. Yeah. You know, or humming, you know, whatever. And I just lose it. And I'm like, wait, it's not keeping my attention. And, you know, there's there's a lot of cool stuff going on in there. But for some reason, it's like the, the, the whole unit maybe isn't as great as the sum of its parts. It's one of those things. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, maybe it's got to grow, too. Another big thing is... The drums are really low in the mix. That's that was totally not Mike Portnoy. You know, everybody thinks he had an ego, but I thought the, I don't know what they're talking about. The drums sounded great on all his records. And Mike Mangini, not to undersell him, he's really awesome. He's played with Annihilator and you know everybody under the moon too. And he's just so low in the mix, and I can tell. I can I've got intuitive ears, and I can tell he's doing some really awesome stuff under there. It's like crank it up so these people that aren't quite so savvy can hear it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what's about that, but like I said. I'll, I'll hold reservation until I hear the old album, but I hope that uh, they didn't lose an important songwriter because Mike Portnoy was. It's like, you know, great. They can still sound like they did back in the day, but it's like, you know, they, they used to write those albums in the studio. You have a drummer, you have John Myung, the bass player, and you had John Petrucci and Jordan Rudis, and they would all just jam. And that's how they wrote their albums. This one they wrote with a drum machine. Not the same. Uh-huh. You know, John Petrucci programmed all the drums with the drum machine. They made their album with that drum machine. Then they sent that stuff off after the fact to Mike Mangini after he'd been hired, and he emulated everything. So hmm. we'll see if that has its effects and takes its toll in the actual songwriting. But other than that, everybody sounded fantastic. Um, the production was a little off. The mix was off. Like The guitars were really loud, and the keyboard was really loud, and the drums were really quiet. The bass was back, which is cool. So, I don't know. Hopefully it's not. But I don't know if it's the final master mix or not. You know, that, that's what they do with those free giveaways. They don't give you the, you know, right, right. final dust-it-off product. But anyway, that's that's it for me. I just want to throw that in there. Anybody that cared about the world of Dream Theater and Progressive Rock, I do. But 
<laughs> well, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, the great segment this week, uh, Red Rocket. Oh, no problem, man. Sorry I got a book on out. It's all right. Yeah, it sounds like your trademark's still going off in the background. Uh, you're smoking. See, and I, I, I told you, I don't even hear it, man, anymore. The calling card. That's right, calling it's, card. All the great call- ones leave their mark. <laughs> Did you, have you received any hate mail yet? Not yet. Yeah. No? See, I'm still waiting on that. But. <laughs> I don't care, man. man. Facebook page or email, like I said on Facebook. Send it to us. You know, you know what? I, after a while, I think we're all going to get used to it, too, and, and we're all not going to hear it after a while. <laughs> I don't hear it. Well, because it drove me nuts when I first started living here like crazy. I told you. I told River. I took a broom to that thing one day, and I tried unscrewing it, and I couldn't do it. I nearly broke it, and it looks broken. Because I just I couldn't take it anymore. I went all like shining Jack Nicholson on it, and it still works. Like I can't I can break it, but I can't break it enough. And I just gave up, and I got used to it. It's like what's the what's the saying? If you can't beat them, join them, or maybe that's yeah. not quite right. But I just like said, forget it. I'm going to live in harmony with it. <laughs> well, uh, you, well, uh, you want to close us out then, or? Yeah, we got to close that. Send us into the break. Send us into the break. That's right. Um, uh, or, or don't. Yeah. No, I totally will. <laughs> All right, Can you I guys been listening to Hey, no. <laughs> Starting job, no. <laughs> uh, no, you guys have been listening to the metal segment of Behind the Mask. I'm the Red Rocket. Enjoy the show. The Jezebels, the toughest gang of teenage girls ever to slash their way across a motion picture screen. The Jezebels, are the young rebels fighting for survival in a decaying society? Or are they just teenage hoodlums taking advantage of their youth to frustrate the law? They can't hold us with juveniles. <laughs> First, you'll meet Lace. She's as affectionate as a scorpion, with all the loving tenderness of a buzzsaw. Okay, you want me out? You're gonna have to fight me. You got knocked off, right? Big deal! If you go, gonna turn out bad then there's maggie a shapely young bundle of female dynamite ready to explode on contact you're a chicken you'll also meet the girl who earned the nickname of butter a little something to uh, relax the nerve. And it's only five bucks. Come on, Superman. And then there's the one they just called Patch. I lost my eye for this gang, remember? We used to be tough. They also call her the Smiling Cobra. Shameless. You get a woman! And from now on, that's gonna be a, the Jezebel, yeah! <laughs> the Jezebels. You'll hey. laugh with them. <laughs> You'll love with them. Maggie? What's going on in there? <laughs> Don't try to fight with them. Go <laughs> Jezebels is a story of today and maybe a little bit of tomorrow. Hey, freaks, welcome back to Behind the Mask. Yeah, yeah, we are joined now by our good friends from Horror Happy Hour, Dave and Chris. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for being on. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much for having us on. 
That's, oh, it's our that's pleasure. Perfect. Can well, you guys can... just kind of talk about a little bit what what horror happy hour is? And yeah, uh, give us some give us some background on the horror happy hour. Horror Happy Hour is a YouTube channel. Horror Happy Hour is a website now. We got interviews, reviews. We got DVD release dates. We got comic book, horror comic release dates. I'm not talking about superheroes and shit. I don't give a shit about those people in tights. (laughs) We got, you know, it's it's a website, horrorhappyhour.com. Self-explanatory. You'll love it. I love it. (laughs) We can love it. You guys start this up. (laughs) Wait, what was that? When did we start it up? Uh, Yeah. Jesus, like, um... Started up a couple months ago. No, we well, we started the website a couple <laughs> months ago. It, it it initially started with me and Dave just being stupid and getting uh, a video camera and just Get, doing yeah. dumb things. Getting drunk in front of the video camera yeah. and reviewing movies and people were like, "Yay!" So we were Look like, "Okay, two drunk idiots." Yeah, we'll keep going with it. Whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's how I found you guys. So I <laughs> I obviously enjoyed it. So. Everybody found us through the a Serbian film review. Every person I know and shit like that seemed to have found us through that review. <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah. I mean, I was actually I was looking for info on that movie, and yeah, that was one of the things that popped up. And I watched your review of it, and I was like, "Fuck, I love these people. They're great." And yeah, like, we got one of the six, uh, six death threats later. Here we are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> how dare you like that movie? <laughs> so fucking yeah, that's how we got a guy from Severed Cinema and shit like that. Used to be on Severed Cinema. We got him through that review. He saw yeah. that review, and he came on our site and shit. So. I'm just gonna let Dave ramble on a little bit. Yeah, no, you're gonna keep letting me ramble. You can ramble on. Go ahead, ramble, ramble no. all you need to. So, so basically, that's we're, just, we are. we're a website, and yeah, you know, we we host contests. Right now, we have one for anybody that's a self-published author. You have till August to get me your book, and if you win, which shouldn't be that hard because there's only five prizes. Yeah, there's only like <laughs> six, only like four entries. There's only so, six entries. No, there's four entries. There's four, five there's prizes, six. four entries. So get that book into me, and. Uh, one of our guys is going to be taking it to uh, ZombieCon, and he will buy uh, a bunch of copies of your book and then promote the shit out of it. Yeah, like 50 or 100 copies. And like turn it into Very a graphic cool. novel. And it gets so. turned into a graphic novel. So definitely for self-published authors, it's something to look out for. Yeah. Very cool. So are you guys, uh, it sounds like you guys are out of New York then, huh? Yes. Definitely out of New York. In case my accent didn't give it away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you guys have been hanging out with Joe Spinell or something. Fucking the maniac himself. You know? You know? No. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Well, we haven't been hanging out with him and shit. That would have been awesome and shit. Get a couple of prostitutes, kill them. Wow. Yeah, that's right, dude. Well, now it'd be like zombie Spinel, right? That's right. Exactly. <laughs> zombie Spinel. Which would almost be, yeah, that'd, that'd be pretty cool, too. Get people everywhere. <laughs> right. Zombie Spinel and all of his, uh, all of his mannequins that that's come right. to life. Yeah, exactly. We had a, yeah, you know, I need a couple of those. Yeah. Where do they sell those shits? I'm very freaked you out want? by mannequins, actually. Craigslist. I bet you if you check on Craigslist, you find a couple of them. They got <laughs> it on Craigslist. You yeah. know they got that. Pretty sure Dave accidentally ordered a dead hooker in the trunk. Yes, yeah, I no, I was, I was trying to order a dead hooker in a trunk, and I think I ordered a dead hooker. From a trunk. <laughs> nice. It's going to be an awesome package. Can't send that shit at UPS. Yeah, who, who hasn't had to deal with that problem, right? Uh, right, but I, I figured it was a pretty common problem, fairly common. <laughs> It'll happen. Well, shit, we kind of wanted to get into uh, watch the film uh, Switchblade Sisters, aka the Jezebels, aka Playground Gang. And you guys watched it also, right? Yes, we did. Yes, we just watched. Aka Stiletto Sisters. Go ahead. Oh, Sorry. Another, there was another one. Yeah, Holy exactly. Fuck. <laughs> the the wow. movie of many names. Right. That's Jesus right. Christ! As many of those were back then in that day, I guess. Oh hell yeah! Like fifty different fucking titles for one movie. And, and let, it, let me just let me just uh, give a background about this movie real quick. Uh, it was released May 1975 of a budget of uh, three hundred twenty thousand dollars and uh, directed by Jack Hill. Um, Jack Hill. Yeah, I mean he, you know. He, he did Spider Baby, right? He did Spider yes. Baby. He did Spider Baby, and then uh, a few of the classic, you know, uh, some of his. I mean, uh, probably most well-known films, other than Spider Baby, were the ones with Pam Greer. Uh, you know, he had the the Big Bird Cage in '72, Coffee in '73, and Foxy Brown in '74. Foxy Brown. Brown. Yeah, some of those good, some of those good black exploitation movies. Yeah, King of Grindhouse, pretty much. Yeah, those were fun, man. So this was, yeah, this one, yeah, like you said, from 75. Um, the, dag- the Dagger Debs and the Silver Daggers. That's right. 
The one thing I noticed about this movie was Bob from that 70s show. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that too. Don Stark. Bob. Don Stark. Yeah. Don Stark. That was the first thing I noticed. I was like, that's fucking Bob. Coincidentally, he seems like the only one like that actually like got a flourishing career after that. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. One of them voiced the character on Rainbow Bright. Yeah, man. Lace. <laughs> Lace. Lace did. And, and I great. remember her as the Rainbow Bright character, Twink. Twink? I'm lame like that. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Donut uh, mesh one movie after that. Donut did a movie after that, and that was it. That was the end of her career. That's yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah, no, I... Um... Yeah, was there any was there any other background you wanted to give to that, or you want to just jump right into what uh, we're thinking? Let's dip our nuts into it. All right, well, you you guys are the guests, so we're going to let you guys go ahead and, uh, yeah, dig right into it. Let us know what you thought. I'm going to go first, and I don't have any nuts to dip in, so I'll just uh, <laughs> dip in. <laughs> dip in dip those, <laughs> dip in. Dip those, dip those labias in there. Dr. Sue shit. So uh, I, I enjoyed this <laughs> Because it had like three of the most fundamental things that make a movie good for me: uh, a bunch of hot chicks that were violent. Yep. And uh, you know I'm easy to please, so that was really nice. Uh, I, I especially liked the Lacey or Lace and um, what the hell was her name? I can't even remember her name. Patch. Patch. No. Patch. Maggie. 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 Yep. I liked their like relationship and how like Lace Soul was like, oh, she's so great, and then the, how quickly that changed. She was oh, like, yeah. oh. Friends. We're friends. I was like, man, you knew the bitch for twenty minutes. We're friends. We're best buddy. Mm-hmm. We went all together. We beat we beat some lesbian warden up. Yeah, I tell you, Maggie was like, I ain't gonna join no gang. Two seconds later, she's like almost the leader of. Yes, yeah, right, right. <laughs> Quick flip. Speaking of that lesbian warden, uh, I, I'm sure you guys caught the fact that uh, it was totally a dude with a wig on when they were fighting her. Oh my god, I did not know. No, that. I didn't notice that. Oh. Watch it again. Oh my god, watch it again. You'll <laughs> laugh your ass off. We we re, me and my brother rewound it a couple of times cuz I I just happened to catch it and I'm like, dude, that was such a guy. And uh cuz the guy was like way skinnier than the than the fucking lesbian chick that they had on there. I didn't even notice that. I did not I did not notice a bulge at all. They 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 disguised that bulge very well. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It, it, just go back. I mean, if you don't want to see the whole movie again, go back and watch that one part because you'll laugh your ass off. We're going to have to do that now. Yeah, definitely will. Definitely I, will. I, I, I was mildly frightened for Maggie when she was like, that's it. I'm going to, I got to search you inside. I'm like, what <laughs> yeah. does that? When has that ever been a okay? <laughs> Do they? I don't know. I've, I've never, never been, been in a women's prison. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Really? No, I mean, if I went to one and shit, I'd like to think something like that would happen to me personally. So, well, not I, not I dig inside. You know, maybe I dig inside. They don't dig inside. Matt. Yeah, you, yeah, you don't <laughs> want to get searched inside. No, no. I don't want to get searched. Let me, let me see what I can find in here. Let me try to find. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, we got off we got off on a little tangent there, but yeah, keep going, Chris. <laughs> no, that was a uh, that was my two cents. I enjoyed the movie overall. Um, like I said. I found it had a lot of, like, interesting little parts. And I, because, like, I had never seen it before, and it is kind of, like, dated since, obviously, the 70s. Long, yeah, yeah. long ago. But um, to me, it held the test of time. I enjoyed it. I would watch it again. I will watch it again now just to see, like, the, the man switch from the lesbian. Yeah, yeah, there's there's those little nuances in there, you know, that you, <laughs> you just gotta, you gotta check it. You gotta catch them. They're funny. I said- I loved her little rant at the end, like when she's got blood all over her face and she's like, "Open the cop shit." Oh yeah, oh yeah. But she went crazy at the end. She started giving she this new speech, like she had that written out. She had oh yeah. They had been rehearsing that speech and shit. <laughs> Taken by the cop, I got the speech going. <laughs> I like that's it. great. I, th- I wanted to see more. Every time, like, something crazy was happening, I felt like they didn't show enough. Like, when they took the one chick into the van, it's, I don't even want to say that. It makes me sound like a sick individual and shit. And they're about to, like, you know, the, the whole group, uh, Krabbits and his whole gang and shit, is about to face Yeah, yeah. They have ridiculous outfits. I don't know what it is with that gang and their ridiculous outfits. They were like, <laughs> yeah. you're going to be part of this gang. You're going to need, a, like, a leisure suit. Or you're going to need something really colorful. Because you have, like, the, the kind of bikers, and then you had, like, the leisure suit Larry group. A gang of chicks? What happened to a gang of chicks? Do, do chick gangs even exist they anymore? They should, because they're just hot. It's like foxy boxing. Dude, but... I wouldn't fuck with a yeah. chick gang of chicks. No way. But the truth of the matter, if there was a chick gang, they would not all be that hot. 
Yeah, right? I would be like, no, don't assault me. Oh. No. Well, there was there was the one in the movie. What was her name? Donut? Donut, yeah. But even even her, like, being the biggest chick in the movie was still attractive. Yeah, she yeah, was well, still- she, You know, she had a pretty good set of tits on yeah, her, it looked like. she showed some cleavage. Yeah. Yeah, she was the only one not dressed like the other ones. And but a big chick with no tits is like a crime against humanity. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> that is, you gotta have, you know what I'm saying? If you're gonna be big, you gotta have big tits, come you on. Know, shouldn't that just be like, you know? It should be mandatory. Oh, mandatory. yeah. Yep, so now that all the, all the big women in the world are gonna come after me and murder me. Yeah, she did. She <laughs> and did bad, and that was it. Here comes more death threats. Yeah, exactly. Seriously, I just, I just, I just can't have a week without them. <laughs> right. So, Ridiculous. Fat, <laughs> fat bitches need love too, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, all the gangs, I, I don't know. What, they were really, was, really was, funny. There's a bunch of white gangs in this movie. Does that even exist anymore? It was the 70s, babe. It was the yeah. 70s? Yeah. No, there's, no, there's no white gangs anymore. Can you name Ku, a white gang? Ku Klux, Ku Klux Klan? <laughs> Yeah, no, I wouldn't call them. Again. Yeah, but they're not really a reputable gang. Nobody yeah, really no, likes no. them. No, they don't got any street cred. Yeah, no, it's not <laughs> like the other gangs. Like, like fucking West Side Story. <laughs> yeah. Officer Krupp keep shit. <laughs> wow, I didn't think that one would get busted out. <laughs> Krupp, you, Officer Krupp key. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. He's making fun of that. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Hello? Hello? The first, the first thing, that, the first thing that came to my mind when I was watching this, other than Kill Bill and shit, because the chick with the patch on the eye automatically reminded me of Kill Bill. Right. I'm sure Tarantino stole it directly from this movie and shit. Was uh, the Warriors? I don't know if you ever saw the Warriors. Oh yeah, love, oh, yeah. love the Warriors. Right. This is the first movie and shit like that. Like, well, not the first movie. This movie reminded. That was the first movie that came to mind while watching this was the Warriors. I was like, this is the Warriors with chicks. I had the same. I had almost the same thought. I mean, it reminded me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there were elements that reminded me of the Warriors. Yeah, definitely. Welcome, welcome back, Cotter, with like <laughs> yeah. Warriors, with a whole bunch of chicks. You have this movie. Yeah. I welcome back Carter. because I don't. know, I just had this weird welcome back, Cotter feeling. I, like, I was expecting like Horshack to show up no, in a minute. Like Bob, or Epstein. Bob, who's also from the '70s show, also in Welcome Back, Carter. No, was yes, he? he was. No, he was not. Was he really? Uh, look it up. Don't even say that. When we, when you that. made me look up all of this, it was on there. I made her research all these people yeah, and shit. Did. I was like, yeah, let's see who still has a career. Let's see who's still going and shit. It was just Bob. Well, see now, now you got now you got me on one because uh, you know you didn't know that uh, Vincent D'Onofrio was the uh, the mechanic from Adventures in Babysitting. So now uh, I don't know. I you got me stumped on the uh, Don Stark and uh, Welcome Back, Hotter now. Gonna research this yeah, no, she, right she, now. she's gonna have to look that up and shit. I think she's making that shit up. Why would I make that up? Because you, you, <laughs> you just make shit up. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got a pair of tits, you just make shit up. You know, that's how it is. So, yeah, well. <laughs> so, Dave, I mean, Dave, what were your, I mean, overall, what did you like the movie or? I, I don't know. It's, with these 70s movies and shit like that, I feel like a lot of people love them because they watch them back in their like youth and whatnot, so there's a certain nostalgia attached to them. Sure. But I feel like horror really didn't come into its... I mean, there were still some gory movies in the 70s, obviously the 60s when H.G. Lewis started and shit. Yep. I feel like horror really didn't come into the gore until about the 80s. And that's when I really started falling in love with it and shit. Right. Like, the 70s had Halloween with John Carpenter and shit like that. But I feel like the height of his career was The Thing. I feel like that was the best movie he ever... That's just personal conjecture and shit. Yep. But, um... I felt like these 70s movies and shit like that, these 70s grindhouse movies in particular and shit, were made popular by Tarantino. And uh, a lot of people just love them and shit. I feel like, obviously, because there's a certain nostalgia attached to their youth and whatnot, and also because Tarantino was like, oh, I love these movies, so everybody else was just like, oh, I love these movies also. Right. But that's just, you know, that's just personal opinion and shit. Obviously, a lot of people are going to have their torches and pitchforks up after me after I make a statement like that, because 70s is the most popular decade for horror. With things like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, with things like the Halloween. I'm pretty sure American Werewolf in London came out then. Oh, yeah. Seven. Shit. But, um... Yeah, I no, I, I agree with what you're saying, though. I mean, you know, I think there are, there are a lot of legitimate fans of these movies. But, you know, there are a lot of bandwagon fans, too. Just, you know, that, that watch them just because Tarantino said you should, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I didn't see Night and Day. I did not see Night and Day with Cameron Diaz and Tom Cruise until Tarantino told me to. Until yeah. Tarantino, with his list, said, you should see Night and Day. And that I still cannot fucking believe. I can't really? believe he got behind that movie. He got behind that? I actually watched that a week ago, and I turned it off three-fourths of the way through it. It sucked. Get the shit out of here, man. I actually, it was, it was, it was okay. It fucking it was, sucked. 
<laughs> we turn that. Me and my girlfriend turn that shit off. We are bored as fuck. <laughs> I just, every time I see Tom Cruise, the only thing I can think through in my mind is him like basically trying to beat up Oprah. <laughs> yeah, on her couch and shit. That's he a hard one. Like I think like a pe- a belt. He whooped ass on a train with just like a belt or something. Well, I was telling her I was like, this is a type of action movie my grandma would fucking like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're like not grandma. Oh, uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> hey, to each his own, right? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like it too much either. Don't I will that. invite your grandma over. And I- <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. go, grandma. We're watching night and day. Just have the r- latest Robert Redford flick there, too. She'll uh, be all over. <laughs> He's still doing movies? <laughs> He's still alive? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah, man. He's king, dude. Robert oh. Redford. Well, even not, yeah, maybe maybe one of the older ones. You can do night and day and then the horse whisperer. There you go. <laughs> oh, we did watch that one. Double right? feature. Yeah. <laughs> Right there. It was like I got Night and Day and I got The Hunt for Red October. He was in Hunt for Red October, right? I got Hunt know. for Red October. You I don't, don't even, even know. know. I don't even know. And by the way, know. I was right. Donald Clark was in Welcome Back Home. Oh, he no was. shit. Fucking Bob, man. Bob has had a career since this movie. Has been in work since this. That's great. The rest, um, the rest of them, not really so much. I think one of them was in Enter the Dragon. I think Krabs was. <laughs> I think he was oh, in Enter the Dragon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you might be right. Fucking Krabs. Fucking crab. Rainbow. <laughs> that guy. He was like, he wanted to be like fucking Reagan or something, didn't he? Yeah. He yes. wanted to be, he was like a little Ronald Reagan, but he fucking sold drugs and shit. So I guess that kind of hurts that, but. Giving free drugs away to kids and cookies. <laughs> right, yeah. I say that was a business plan. I don't really understand why nobody gives me drugs with cookies. I know. No, they don't distribute that little, shit anymore. I feel a little, like, cheated. Like a new kind of Nabisco. Gotta go to Amsterdam for that. Get those good hash cookies. Uh, see, that's a plane flight. That's all kinds. Yeah, kind of, yeah that's, <laughs> that's a that's so far. <laughs> yeah, right. Somebody Can't, just somebody just make me some hash cookies for fuck's sake. Serious. Send them here. I will gladly eat them. <laughs> give them a shout out, even though you probably don't want it. Even though you're probably poisoning me and I die, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Don't send me cookies. How does that sound? Don't send them. Cookies. Yeah, don't send them. Somebody, somebody that didn't like your review of a Serbian film might send you some cookies. And oh yeah, these are hash cookies. Eat them. <laughs> these are cyanide. Co- I mean, hash. Yeah. <laughs> Admit to the fact that you would, you experienced horror. Don't tell me like, oh no, a Serbian film was nothing, dude. Admit to the fact that you experienced horror. Oh yeah, that was that's. Probably the most horrific thing I've seen. I think Riverman, you're yeah, in agreement that, there. It's that was the movie was a piece of shit in my opinion. I'll never revisit that movie again. Here comes the death threat. We're gonna get a yeah, death. No, yeah, he he finally he finally watched it. I think I told you guys already. He finally watched. No, it. I'm glad I watched it. but yeah. I'm never gonna watch it again. I mean, yeah, it's not one like it's not a movie that you're just like, hey, you know, what? I really think I should watch this over. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Let me know your feelings on Switchblade Sisters, so I'm yeah. not totally fucking out of line to him. Okay. Oh, okay. okay, yeah. Yeah, let's get... I guess we should get back on topic here. Huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's, go, it's ahead, an- go ahead, Riverman. Like Tarantino and Nabisco cookies and shit. I forgot all <laughs> Well, uh, Well, basically, I want to talk about Jack Hill in this movie. Um, he combines many sub-genres, uh, like the teen exploitation, black exploitation, and women in prison films, all in this movie. Yeah, it was all there. Which uh, I really enjoyed with, uh, you know, it's basically... Throwing in all exploitation movies into one movie, which I have yet to see, um, which was kind of original for me. But um, except non exploitation, there was no nun exploitation. No, no, no nuns. No, no nuns, which no kind nuns. of sucked. But yeah, they could have <laughs> could have used nuns. Yeah, yeah, right. The good old beaten from a nun and shit. <laughs> I think we're yeah we were originally saying it was released as the Jezebels in the early seventies, and then they end. Or it was actually Witchblade Sisters back in the seventies. Then they changed it to the Jezebels, and then Tarantino bought the rights, and then he switched it back to Switchblade Sisters. Um, well, basically, yeah, he, he did that whole you know that Rolling Thunder Rolling Pictures, Thunder Pictures yeah. series, mm-hmm. um, and this was one of them. Yeah, this was one of the films. I think yeah. there was only like five films that was. Yeah, there was like under this Rolling one. Thunder Pictures. Detroit 9000 was one of them. There was a bunch of Japanese, I think. Yeah, a movies. few Japanese flicks. Um, but yeah, there wasn't a whole lot yeah. under that. But uh, yeah, basically the film opens, which I liked, with a picture montage and the song uh, "Black Hearted Woman," which uh, kind of turned me on to the movie. I was like, yeah, this is, you know, I'm starting to dig this a little. Yeah, bit. it was a good intro, good old school intro. Um, and then it basically leads into you meet Lacey and everything, and uh, you know her family life and uh, getting their getting their TV taken away. Oh, exactly. Then, <laughs> 
Then they end up, uh, you know, I mean, I think they... Don't they end up beating the shit out of some guy in the elevator? Yeah, there's the, the a repo guy. guy. Yeah, yeah. Repo guy, Because he, he, yeah. he takes their food money, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, they all, all her and her, uh, her uh, fellow dagger Debs catch up to him in the elevator and, and give, him a little, uh, give him a little talking to. I thought they stabbed the shit out of him. All that's what I cut, thought. Yeah. yeah that's, they cut the mad shirt off. Yeah, that's all they did was slash his shirt up. I'm like, what the fuck? I thought they just stabbed the shit out of him. Right? Dagger Debs didn't have any daggers. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, uh, they him took and every, it easy. Give me that gun. Give me that gun. <laughs> yeah. He was holding on to it like, here, yeah, yeah, just take it. Take he it. wasn't polite to hit women. Yeah. Oh, no, that's true. That's true. Well, still not polite to hit women. Didn't happen until like that. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, um, <laughs> the next scene, they're, uh, they're all in the local uh, burger hole or whatever, and um, they meet, they see Maggie and a group of her friends and uh, start harassing him and shit and... Uh, yeah, Maggie ends up uh, beating down Patch. Was it with her, her belt or whatever? Yeah, yeah, she's got like some weird chain thing. Yeah, like chain belt. Indiana Jones shit, man. She pulled Indiana Jones out of her pocket. Yeah, she like whipped, whipped the fuck out of him with some goddamn contraption. I don't know what the fuck that was. So basically, yeah, <laughs> they, the cops end up coming and end up busting the, the girl gang and not the guy gang, of course, because they were fighting and uh, sending them to a juvenile detention like we were talking about earlier. Um... <clears throat> And then, of course, like, you know, the dyke, um, the women in prison, you know, starts to come out. Mm-hmm. and um, Yeah, that's the, the whole, yeah, girls behind bars element to it. Yeah. And basically, uh, Lace doesn't get out. And because, uh, Maggie ends up getting out because uh, it was her first time or whatever getting thrown in She there. wasn't officially part of the gang yeah. at that time. And uh, she gets out early and Lace wants... Uh, um, doesn't she want to give a Dom, Dom a message or whatever? Yeah, she wants her to take this this uh, you know this letter Love note or yeah, it yeah. ends up being a poem which they they read out loud and th- that scene I was really amused with. Yeah, I agree. Twinkling stars from behind. Yeah. Stars. <laughs> Come on, read it, Nikki. <laughs> Whoever thought lace was that deep, right? Yeah, yeah. Thought she was a hardcore cunt, but no. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. We'll we'll get into speaking of cunt. Um, Speaking of cunt, huh? Yeah, um, Dom ends up uh, following Maggie home. Right. And, uh, of course, the sleaziest part of the movie where he just, like, has his way with her. Even pretty much rapes her. But, rapes her. But she pretty much likes it. Even, it with, even like. with mom home in the other yeah. room, which yeah, is fucking guy, hilarious. The other guy comes out and he's like, listen, I got to run this building. I got to deal yeah, with these people. Right. Do, do you know who that is? <laughs> who was that? <laughs> Who was that with mustache? Came out and shit like that. He was like, "Listen, I ain't gonna do shit. We're just gonna go back in here. We're gonna fit yeah, the he was, Yeah, the the building the building super was yeah banging her mom for rent. Good old good old supers. <laughs> Can always trust them for some work like that. I wonder when sex went out for currency. <laughs> like when you yeah. can't start paying your rent. Yeah. Right. Like, who who was Captain Mustache? Do you know who Captain Mustache was? I don't even know who that was. I'm not oh, sure. No, yeah. I'm not oh, sure. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of mustache, like in that movie though, the tell me you did not think there. You know the school principal. You know the guy I'm talking about. Weasley. Mister Mister Weasel. Yeah. Yeah. Did you not think he looked like fucking Higgins from Magnum PI? Oh my god. That's who I fucking thought of when I seen that guy. <laughs> your name is Higgins. <laughs> yeah. Eat your beans, Higgins. No. Uh, <laughs> Tom. Uh, if you've seen your Family Guy, oh, that's yeah. what that. No, Tom, no, Tom Selleck. These are Higgins beans. <laughs> You've had yours. Um, <laughs> but no, that's, I, I don't know. That was just kind of a, a little aside there. I thought the uh, the principal looked like Higgins from Magnum P.I. Sorry. Tell me that Don wasn't really pimping those girls out for mad cheap. It was like $5. Yeah, $5. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. In a bathroom and in shit like that. In the bathroom, like yeah. I got this girl in here, five bucks. Do whatever you want. <laughs> do I got to do one? One. <laughs> I just did twelve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one more, baby. One more. Come on. God, I think she made a hundred bucks yet. Right? He was like, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Twenty more dollars. That's it. Just twenty more bucks. <laughs> yeah. She's been in here for three days. I've got three hundred dollars. <laughs> Holy shit. <Ew. laughs> The nerd guy was like, no, no. <laughs> yeah, he didn't want nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, he put up much of a fight. Oh, no, he did. Uh, all day. I don't, right? I don't know. Five dollars. That's great. You know, you kind of, that kind of guarantees your disease. Right? Jesus. Yeah, right? I know. 
Price prostitutes have really I, raised I, their I, price. I save the twenty off of the uh, hepatitis. I'm probably going to give you. <laughs> hey, it's the the economy. Everything's going up, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Even sex in bathrooms more expensive than that. Five bucks. Oh my god. I know, man. I I just paid like fifteen for. Sex in a bat. No, I'm kidding. That was... A pack of cigarettes is ten. A box of condoms is more than five bucks. Just kidding, honey. If you listen to the show, I didn't I didn't have sex in a bathroom with anybody. I swear. It was more like 60. <laughs> yeah. I did, but it was myself, so... I really... Oh, you know, so pay... Basically... Uh, I'm going to pay myself Are we going to gonna get back on topic here now? No. <laughs> keep, keep getting all Magnum PI and all kinds of crazy shit now. Oh, yeah. That was my fault. So basically, uh, Patch, Patch is trying to stir shit up with uh, Maggie, yeah, um, and get uh, or with uh, with Lace to get Maggie to hate her, yeah. So um, I don't know. I mean, my favorite scene, my favorite scene in the movie was the roller skating rink scene. When yeah, all, all hell breaks loose. Um, you know, it just randomly. I mean, everything's fine, and then somebody like you know busts out a piece and starts uh, shooting the place up. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was great. Fine. Everything is fine until somebody pulls a machine gun. That's yeah, right. yeah. And yeah, it, it kind of caught me off guard a little bit. But it was, I mean, I thought that that part was really cool. And totally then, ruined the couple skate. That's right. And then they end up, uh, <laughs> of course, you know, I don't want to give too much away, but the uh, main character dies. In, yeah, uh, one of them. Yeah, one of them does. In the flick. And then uh, they end up getting revenge for his death, which, uh, of course, they meet up with, uh, you know, the... The Black Panthers or whoever it is. Some yeah. kind of Black female Panthers. Black female yeah. Panthers. What was up with them believing in, like, uh, communism? Yeah, communism out of nowhere. They had a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't fucking Hanging know. up on the wall and everything. They're like, yeah, here's a little red book. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of out of nowhere. <laughs> really? Like, wait, when were the Black Panthers associated with communism? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Freedom fighters for communists. Oh, the, the world of Switchblade Sisters. It was a, a, a strange <laughs> one. Well, that's what made it so good. If there was oh, a mess, yeah. yeah, I do not know what it was. Yeah. The Black Panthers, you were a communist. But, communist. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. You know, I like that. I like that. I did like that element of it, though. You know, they brought that, that you know, the black the black chicks into it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, brought that, you know, like you said, that little bit of element of black exploitation to it. You know, they brought just, you know, those female militant, you know, black chicks that, you know, just were ready to fucking take the man down, you know? <laughs> and uh, it was just one of those one of those other elements that they threw into the movie, which I, I really enjoyed. Oh, hell yeah. And I'm a huge teen exploitation fan. That was on it, too. And uh, Oh, there's, yeah. There, like like there was Dave said, there was, you know, the only thing that was missing was nuns. Yeah, that was it. You throw a couple they, beatings from nuns, man, you had a complete movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, over... Go ahead. Oh, I got to, sorry, I got to say, I, I would highly recommend, I mean, if you're a fan of, like, you know, the 70s grindhouse exploitation genre, like, I, I was really entertained with this movie. I definitely will be revisiting it. Yeah. Um, there was so. a, a lot of good, like, one-liners in it, oh, too, you yeah. know, like, hands off the fruit, faggot, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was Patch, I think that was Patch that said that one. Um, you yeah, know, the cops frisking her. Oh, uh, yeah. Hands off the fruit, faggot. <laughs> uh, that, that cracked me up but there yeah a lot of great lines and that you know it was one that i i was actually i was kind of tired when i started watching it mm-hmm. like i was pretty much ready to pass out because i had watched uh rubber just before it yeah. and uh you know i i enjoyed rubber but it, you know it was a little slower and and you know i was it was getting later in the night and i started getting kind of tired but then we started Switchblade Sisters, and it totally fucking just woke me up. You know, I was really entertained by it, and uh, I just I had a I had a hell of a lot of fun with oh, it. Hell yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not big into seventies movies, but I gotta say that I, I really did find this one very enjoyable. It was fun. It was chick power. Yeah. There needs to be more of the movies like that. Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying that because I'm a girl. But what's uh, what's your favorite uh, exploitation type of movies? Uh? I'm um, to be honest, I'm really not hugely into the exploitation movies. Like I've mentioned, okay. like I'm, just, I'm not really. But I, I, I'm more of like a gore hound. So okay, I, you know, and and exploitation <laughs> like me don't generally tend to go extremely gory. They're well, usually, Fulci. Oh yeah, well Fulci's like a uh, he's, heard of a different tale. Yeah, yeah. Gore exploitation. Yes. <laughs> gore. Yeah. Right. 
gore exploitation. But um, yeah, I, just exploitation in general and shit. I know they started turn, they started calling it torture porn, which was like a fucking a term I, I I personally hate and shit like that because it's 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 indicating and shit like that that people are watching these fucking bloody movies and jerking their chicken to get off, right? Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> nope. Actually, we're all we're all covering our mouths, we're all covering our eyes and shit. There's no uh, ploication there. No. But, uh, just like um, I wouldn't even know yeah, what type of exploitation. Saying, like, I would just say exploitation. As yeah. long as you're exploiting something, we're okay. Right. It's all. Yeah. It's kind of all encompassing, you know. Yeah. No, I haven't. I haven't seen too many women in prison movies. I haven't seen too many non exploitation movies. I've seen a couple and shit like that to like know the subgenre itself and shit, but. Yeah, I have yeah. to say which one is like a favorite and shit. I wouldn't even have any idea. Yeah, yeah, really. Chick exploitation. I like chick exploitation. I think they call, I, yeah, I think they call it porno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. There's a name for that. What about like rape revenge? I, I remember you saying you wanted the rape scene. I didn't know if you guys were into rape revenge movies. Yeah, those good old rape revenge movies. Yeah, I'm not into rape per se. Obviously, <laughs> no, I, yeah. Yeah, I would be in jail if I was into that. But um, <laughs> I'm in, yeah, yeah, right. Thank in you. a fi- in a film. I like the vengeance yeah. after because it kind of like gives you a reason to take this crazy vengeance out and shit. Right. Um, irreversible. Your um. I pers- yeah. Vengeance trilogies, obviously. The uh, old boy, like, lady vengeance. I like the rape revenge movies when it's actually the chick getting the revenge and not like someone related Somebody to else. her or like right. yeah. a friend or this. You know, to me, it's like. You're the person that got hurt, and if you're still uh, if you're still standing after that, well, fucking man up and fuck some shit up. Well, the first, yeah, like thriller, thriller, a cruel picture and shit like oh, that. Yeah, she had shit the whole, up, dude. She learned, and they showed her learning, like kung fu style and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she fucked them all up in slow mo. Well, I was like, I like, yeah. Uh, on your grave too. Like, I felt like she yeah. fucked shit up. Oh like, yeah, man, she fucked shit up. Yeah, you know? ridiculous. But that, like, I, I guess because it's like I said, like for me, it's like. The person that had the bad act done to them, if they're still alive, they should be the one taking the revenge. I don't give a shit that your dad took revenge. Yeah. He should should be taking revenge. Like gutter balls and shit like that, where everybody else but the chick took vengeance and shit. Yeah, right. She orchestrated it, though. Yeah, she she did orchestrate it, I will say. But she didn't really participate in it. Rape vengeance exploitation? I don't know if that's a genre, but... um... I think it's just called (laughs) rape vengeance. (laughs) Yeah, I'm yeah. just gonna add exploitation to the end of everything. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Rape, revenge, exploitation. Like, I'm going into the bathroom to take exploitation. <laughs> or yeah, I, I like yeah, I like what you said. Rape, rape, venge. That's good. Yep. Sex exploitation. Is that a good one? I like. Yeah, yeah that's that's probably what it would fall into. Yeah, Rape sex exploitation. Yeah. yeah. Sex exploitation is my favorite. Then. Yeah. yeah. I love up with that. Jesus Christ! I was like <laughs> ten minutes. I was like, well, what is it called? Uh. And you still. <laughs> There's all kinds of, yeah, I mean, it's just, there's like a ridiculous amount of uh, ploitations these days. Yeah. yeah My serious. personal favorite lately has been uh, Hicksploitation. Hicksploitation, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. I like that Explain one. Hicksploitation to me. I probably know what it is, but I'm like... Like, uh, eat, Eating Alive, uh, Toby Hooper. Okay. Like, uh, Backwoods, you know, Hillbillies, um, like the- Deliverance, uh, stuff like that. Oh, yep. she, she can't, I cannot she can't, stand hill people. She cannot stand them. Understand that, like, I lived it. in, like, I lived in, like, remote southern Jersey for a little while, where, like, you were seriously afraid that somebody might, like, chew on your arm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the that was a, a real possibility. Yes, no, it really was. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's people crazy. People at you like they're going to eat you and weigh your skin. Creepy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I can understand your, uh, your distaste for those ones, then. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I like the, I like the home invasion exploitation. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Home invasion. <laughs> Those are good. You guys, you guys were just talking about one recently called uh, "Kidnapped," right? Yeah, that one. Awesome. That was an amazing, amazing. Yeah. Positive. I need to. I need to see that one because I know you got you guys put it over real well, and yeah, I need to check that one out. It was really. It was like shockingly good. It was really shockingly good. good. It was shocking and good. It was shockingly good. That was a sick ass movie and shit. It left you very hollow inside. And then the Mother's Day remake actually felt more like Kidnapped than it did like Mother's Mother's Day. Day. Yeah, I I don't really understand why they called it Mother's Day remake. Yeah, they really shouldn't have. Yeah, no, it wasn't like the original. Not at all. Not at all. Not Not even. I love the original. Oh, no, it, the original was good. This and, and like you could totally watch this movie and not even think of the original at all because they have fucking nothing to do with each other at all. Wow, not even slightly. 
Yeah, this was like a straight like, up home invasion movie. Yep, straight like, up home invasion. That's about it. Home, like, home invasion count, revenge movie. The body count on that was unbelievable. Man, that's really cool. Yeah, nice. nice. It was definitely sick. I don't know when the those fuck. Are, those are a couple we'll have to get into then. Oh, yeah, man. Most definitely. So let's uh, let's give our uh, official, uh, you know, our official count on Switchblade Sisters, you know. Exactly. How many, uh, out, out of ten, you know, what would you guys give it? I would give it an eight. I enjoy it. I'd watch it again. I'd say seven, only because I needed to see more of the madness. Every time there was something crazy happening, mm-hmm. outside of the prison and shit like that, where all of a sudden everybody's boobies were like, woo, everybody's boobies were flying up. Yeah. Um, I needed to see more of the craziness. Like, I understand and shit like that with the, um, nowadays, I guess I'm, I guess I'm too used to the nowadays, the last decade and shit, the 2000s, where they showed fucking everything. For nothing, sure. nothing was left to the imagination. Oh, yeah. Whereas mm-hmm. this, they left, like, a lot to the imagination, even at the end. When yeah. certain things were done in shadows, I'm not trying to give anything know, I, away. I thought that actually added to it. Personally. You really do? Yeah. No, that left me. That brought me back to like the Dracula days and shit, where everything was done in shadows. I, I like the whole mystery about certain things, like you know, just fighting and it's all shadows. I I enjoyed that. I thought that was a neat touch. Yeah. What about you guys? Well, uh, I'm a I'm a huge uh, '70s junkie, so uh, I would give it 10 out of 10 personally. For the you know the whole uh, exploitation <laughs> grindhouse ac- aspect, I thought it was phenomenal. I I really enjoyed everything about this movie, and I will I will purchase this movie, and I will revisit it too. So, I would have to give it, you know, maybe yeah, nine and a half, ten out of ten. I would highly recommend it. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm kind of split there. I, I I completely agree with Todd, and I do agree with Dave what you were saying um, both. So I'm going to give it uh, eight and a half, nine out of ten um, because I. I'm a huge 70s junkie also, and I was extremely entertained by the movie. Uh, Chris, I do agree with you, by the way, that the, some of the shadow stuff was I, – I, I like that. Um, it just – it depends on the movie. Some movies, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to go all out, just go all out, and I want to see it all. Well, but, uh, you know, it just kind of depends. Um, for this movie, I mean, I don't know. I was kind of torn on it. I like that shadow play toward the end there. Yeah. But then I, like I said, I agree with Dave too that some of the stuff that they were starting to go for, they should have just went for it. Um, I, I think they did it creatively because I, I don't think they had the like necessarily maybe not the know how on how to do certain effects. Well, with the seventies, I kind of like that was a really good way of um, doing it without like overreaching. You know, right, right. Well, I love the seven. I love the Fulci, the Argentos from the seventies. Those are the right. flicks I love from the seventies and shit, where the gore was like the fucking yeah. star. Oh yeah, it was like like I don't know. I just what is it called? Guido exploitation? I don't even know anymore. I'm calling everything. Yeah, Guido exploitation. <laughs> uh, the Argento and Fulci movies. Those are the movies that I, my heart harkens back to. Is those movies in the seventies? When somebody says seventies, oh, yeah. I think Italian spaghetti splatterfests and shit. Sure, sure. But um, it was it was good. It was definitely good. But I needed more. I needed I don't know. Just as the gore hounded me and shit like that, I needed more. Yeah. That I think that kind of kept it from from me giving it a, a ten. Um, I, I could have used a bit more, maybe a, I don't know, even just a little more blood splatter. I don't know something. I I really didn't think it needed it personally. I I can care less. I don't know if I don't, I don't know if it needed it, but I I would have liked to have seen it. <laughs> I don't know. That's I mean that sounds bad, but just to be clear, I'm only giving it an eight because I felt it needed more tits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tits exploitation. That too, you know. I didn't think oh, about that. We could have had another like solid fifteen more minutes of boobies everywhere. Yeah. Oh, that jail. Yeah, that jail fight. That I mean, there, there could have been. Yeah, there could have been more tits busted off. out. Everybody's shirt should have been off that, that that's, jail. That's fight. the only reason it lost two points for me because I'm a giant pervert. Hey, that's okay. <laughs> Bloody we, nipples. We forgive that. Well, yeah. I mean, overall, I think we would all, you know. It sounds like we would all recommend watching it, you know, at least once. Exactly. Definitely. Oh, definitely. 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 Um, you know, it's a it's a pretty fun, enjoyable movie, um, you know, from, you know, from that era. So, you know, if you're if you're at all into that era of movies, definitely check it out. I'm positive that you'll like it. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. If you listen to the show, you'll like it. I sure. It. Yeah. I mean, you'll you'll get a kick out of it. Mo- more than likely, you'll get a kick out of it. If you're into the grindhouse era and shit like that, what they're calling the grindhouse now and shit. Yeah. But, but that's a term being thrown around left and right, grindhouse, oh, right? Oh, 
Grindhouse. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very much so. Very yeah. much so. so. Some movies that don't even have like the competence and shit like that, they figure, ah, oh, we'll make a Grindhouse and shit like that. That'll hide the fact that we have no fucking clue what we're doing and shit. Yeah, we're right. but, uh, yeah. Like, this, this works. But out. this was like a genuine, genuine, yeah. like definitely. Don't don't see these like some of these movies that have no fucking idea what they're doing. See like something from the actual era. Yeah, this was good. Right. And this was definitely, this was definitely one to see from that era because, like, like um, Todd said, like it, it covered a whole shitload of different exploitations. Oh yeah, it, it, it covered the it covered the whole fucking era like very perfectly, perfectly. Yeah, yeah, there was a, a, a yeah good deal of uh, different elements to it, you know, from the uh, the exploitations. So yeah, I think that's part of what made it really enjoyable for me was that it just had all those different elements to it and. It was a lot of fun. I was extremely entertained. So, yeah, because I didn't grow up in the seventies. I grew up in the eighties and the nineties. I don't have the appreciation for that whole era that a lot of people who did grow up in that era, era have. Mm-hmm. I don't have that same appreciation for it and shit like that. So that's sure. just that's oh, just yeah. a thing. That's just like an age thing. Yeah. As he's mentioned, six nine. Uh, have I mentioned this? <laughs> I don't even know what the hell I'm saying anymore. I, I said titsploitation twenty minutes ago. <laughs> but um yeah i i would i would re- i would recommend it to anybody that liked anything like you know that that came out nowadays the uh the death proofs the ticked off trannies with knives the supers and shit the um anybody that liked those type of movies and shit like that i would yeah, absolutely would suggest it to yeah definitely kill bill any shit like that yeah i started watching that uh ticked off trannies with knives i saw it on tv or whatever that was pretty funny you know amazing crystal I, I, I haven't watched the whole thing yet, but yeah, I'm definitely uh, looking forward to watching that on Netflix. <laughs> that was like one of these very few like new age, I'm going to call new age grindhouse that actually was a grindhouse and actually worked good with it. And it had right to actually be called that. Transploitation. Yeah. Transploitation. Really? Transploitation. Yeah, there you go. Because <laughs> it really like, it paid homage to the 70s flicks. It paid, it, and it, it just, it, it was silly and fun and crazy bloody. Mm-hmm. And it had awesome transvestites in it. Yeah, usually, usually these like rape vengeance thing have women and shit like that. This happened to have trans trans aspects. Yeah, so it was just it was fantastic. So, so do you guys dip into Hammer films at all on your site, or are you guys into those? Or, um, not really, no. not too much. The whole you know, like the old school Dracula, like uh, any of those. No? Crips of the Dracula we, we or Brides of Dracula. Whatever yeah, it was. We, we personally don't do too many retro reviews. One of our other guys does. Yeah, we have two other. Well, entirely for yeah. retro reviews. Oh, okay. That's cool. No. We don't even bother. Not that we, we have anything against them. No, we have nothing against them and shit like that. It just, I just, I like the the, uh, the universal black and whites. Mm-hmm. So I prefer those to the Hammer films and shit. Okay. I like the whole, uh, you know, the Dracula, Frankenstein, creature from Black Lagoon, Wolfman. I don't need to go over them. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, and I personally just don't really like those kind of vampires and werewolves. Yeah, okay. It's like if I'm, one. yeah, if you're gonna give me shadow play, give me those. I'm not into like the whole Nosferatu thing. Yeah. Okay. But, but uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> That's the long and short of it. <laughs> well, do you guys, uh, do you guys have anything you want to talk about? Any anything in the future that you guys are working on, or um, um any reviews coming up or anything, or? Oh my lord! Uh, a whole bunch of different ones. Like Troll Hunter it just just came out on IO on pay per view. Troll Hunter. Yeah, I definitely want to review that. I want to review Orphan Killer. Hobo with a Shotgun was another one that that harkened back to those days and shit. I thought that oh, yeah. it had the De- gore. It had the definitely. gore. Definitely. Yeah. You know, I wanted to do Death to Rule of Three shit like that. Yeah, see, Dave. Like Dave's obsessed with Asian movies. I personally am yeah. not at all. Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel was fucking amazing. The Koreans, what they're doing. The Koreans nowadays, they are the fucking, the new Japanese. What? Yeah. <laughs> Watch the Hansel Koreans are the new Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> well, Watch. yeah, I mean, like fucking, what was it? I Saw the Devil. That was a Korean flick, right? Do you know that we still have not seen that still, yet? Everybody's been still oh, like, you still haven't watched it? Oh, fuck. Oh my god, dude! Everybody's still raving about that. We've been such assholes about watching it and shit. Check that out, man! And talk about a good revenge movie. Fuck, I mean, like, you know, Chris, like you were saying, it's not one of those where, uh, you know, the the victim. Well, I mean, I don't know. I guess you could consider him a victim. It's a guy, you know, the the main, you know, protagonist of the movie is a guy whose wife gets killed by, you know, a psycho, Please. and so yeah. he goes he goes after him, you know. 
and uh, makes him pay. You gotta love those gray oh, areas. Yeah. Where everybody's yeah. a victim and everybody's a killer and shit. I love those yeah. gray areas. Oh yeah, and that's that's totally what this one is. And it's I, I I considered it one of like the better revenge movies that I've seen, just because. I mean the the style that it was the, that one had a lot of different elements to it too. And, uh, you know, the, the way that he goes after this guy was just done so originally, I thought. And, uh, I mean, the, uh, some of the shots in that movie, uh, I'm going to tell you, watch out for the cab scene. Once you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. If anybody else has seen the movie, the cab scene was fucking brilliant. Really? Um, so, yeah, check that out. Just the way that he shot it. I mean, it was, it was a brutal scene. It was, oh, fuck, I can't. I love that movie. No, it, it looks fantastic. Like, yeah. it actually looks fantastic. It's just... And everybody has been raving about yeah. it. Everybody and their mother. Yeah. And, I mean, it's it's yeah. a bit long. You know, I mean, it's, it's I think, two hours and 22-minute runtime. But it never feels long. You know, it uh, the pacing was pretty much perfect. Oh, that's um, what you see nowadays when people are like, oh, does it have subtitles? I'm like, yeah, it has subtitles. Like, oh, I can't I watch that. it. I, was I like, would Come rather on. watch them subtitled than dubbed. And they're like, oh, I how know. Long is it? That language doesn't fully translate to yeah. what we have over here, and I know there is shit that we are missing, and that bothers the hell out of me because I, I right. saw it in a couple Asian films where I was like, "This doesn't really make sense with what's going on in the movie, what they're saying," because yeah. like things have such different meanings there than here. Yeah. So I prefer the subtitles. And we talked about that too. Just what was that? Uh, we did a little guest spot on uh, the Exploited Cinema Show recently. And I think we had the same conversation to where, you know, it was like, what do you prefer, you know, dubbing or subtitles? And, I mean, I really think there's no contest. I mean, subtitles is where it's at. <laughs> well, I, I think argue that, like, the problem with, um, du- with with subtitles is that you miss out of the movie. But after a while, you don't even notice it. Like, yeah, you don't really right. notice that you're reading. It's like reading a comic. It's like watching a comic book in motion. Yeah. So it's right. like I'm very used to it. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, my suggestion to anyone that can't get behind subtitles is read a fucking comic book. You'll you get, learn yeah. real quick how to deal with subtitles. You'll get into yeah. it right away. And I think dubbing, I think dubbing takes away from the, the performances, you know, I'm, I'm sure positive. You guys have seen tears of Kali, right? Nope. No, you have not seen that. Oh, no. Uh, your, your positiveness is totally wrong. wrong. Oh, <laughs> totally unfounded there. Um, no, it was a, a German flick from, uh, God, when was that? It was early 2000s. Um, but look into it because it was a pretty good movie from what I, I haven't seen it since then. You know, I haven't seen it in years. But uh, it was a really good movie. And you could tell that the actors were just giving it all they fucking had. But the, it was all dubbed. And the dubbing fucking sucked, you know. And I thought it just totally took away from the, their, the actors' performances. And yeah. uh, it just, it yeah. took me out. It took me out of the movie more than subtitles would have. Yep. Well, so, certain, certain movies with dubbing, I fucking, it's just the dubbing is hilarious. And there's no way you can even deny that. Oh, certain yeah. movies, it's made the movies and shit. That's, that, that's, that's right. what I said too. The old, the old Italian stuff. Yeah. The old Italian with the, with the, with the kid with the high pitched voice. It's like, hello, um, I am, uh, <laughs> yeah. experiencing horror. There was, there was, yeah, there was, or like, <laughs> no, I, we have Ichi the Killer and Ichi the Killer is it's dubbed, dubbed in, in English. English. Is it with English like accents? Sounding like English. So yeah, it's sounds- yeah. Ashimiki and like Guy Ritchie got together and created a <laughs> and it was fucking like, I love and it. And they're not I even mean. just like regular English people, they're like English gangsters. Yeah, they're like s- playing these roles, so it's like what's a bloke? <laughs> 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 yeah. Like laughing because these are like title Asian guys, like with this yeah. like thick English gangster yeah. and voices coming out. Like, you know, little fella, I seem to have gotten no, aboard with a nail in my foot, like but um <laughs> was a, I fucking yeah, well. I say che- whenever I think English, I think Cheerio. Well, that's because you're tart. Send Cheerio since like I just said it two minutes ago. Come <laughs> <laughs> to you. So there are certain movies where the dubbing actually has its own ridiculous charm to it. Yeah, definitely. That, yeah, that is the right. only defense I will come but up with. They have for. to be like silly movies for it to work. Yeah, like, that's the thing. It yeah. needs to. Burial ground or a house like, by the cemetery where it's just like, dude, the dubbing is so dumb. Oh, I mother, I want you badly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love you a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I love you a long time, fellow. <laughs> Mate. Uh, but that was like what kind of ruined Kidnapped a little bit for me as much as I loved it. Oh, I, I gave dude. that movie like a perfect 10. 
But the only thing I felt like, I, I would love to get my hands on a subtitled copy. And if you do see it, try to get one with subtitles and not dubs. Because the dubbing okay. really the fucked dubbing, it up in places. Yeah, the dubbing was really, really dumb on that. The dubbing yeah. was just horribly done. The they sound had like, kept going on and off. And yeah, they were like, we need the worst the worst six like dubbing actors. We need to get the worst. <laughs> it's worst. And we need to get them into this film. Yes, right away. <laughs> yep. Immediately. Sign them up. Well, okay. yeah, thanks guys for coming on and... Uh... Yeah, we really appreciate it. We had a blast. We definitely got to do it again sometime yeah, soon. Yeah, for sure. Yes, we had a blast too. Yes, thank you guys for having yeah. us on. Oh, yeah. We love you guys. And, you know, and, and, and thank you again. You know, I, I've said it on the show before, but now that we got you here, you know, thank you again for, for being such big supporters of our show. Oh, and, uh, you know, we're, we're really happy to uh, kind of be in cahoots with you guys, you know, and um, you guys have been a lot a lot of fun for us. Everybody should listen to the awesomeness that is behind the mask podcast. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and everybody should check out the awesomeness that is horrorhappyhour.com. Hooray! Of course. <laughs> yes, definitely check out behind the mask exploitation. Uh, <laughs> That's right. I like that one. <laughs> behind the mask exploitation. Yeah. Behind the mask exploitation and shit. Yeah, Excellent podcast. That's the uh, the sub genre that our show has turned out to be, huh? Yeah. Behind, What's wrong with that? Behind the mass exploitation. Yeah. Behind the mass exploitation. Fucking A. Right? Well, Not they... for deaf people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not for deaf people. <laughs> exploitation. No. Uh, oh, well, well, did you guys want to send us off? Send us off into a break, guys. <laughs> well, goodbye. I am Dave. I'm Chris, and we're from Horror Happy yeah. Hour, and we want to yeah. thank yeah. Behind the Mass guys for having us on. We definitely had a kind of fun yep and we want to send you the fuck off so have a great night and uh keep on watching horror unless of course you're blind and then just listen to that shit <laughs> if you've ever considered stepping behind the beaded curtain at a sleazy video store if you've ever watched something so vile that you had to lock the door behind you if you currently have a vcr still connected to your home theater then get yourself over to Exploited Cinema at exploitedcinema.blogspot.com. Bat32 and J Dog always keep it greasy. And remember to keep telling yourself it's only a it's podcast. Only, it's only a podcast. It's only a podcast. It's only a podcast. It's only a podcast. Hi, this is Dan Lewinsky from the Dead Owl, and you're listening to Behind the Mask. Hey, Fuck the the hey guys, welcome back. Hey, hey, what a, what a bunch of fun we had with oh. the, uh, Dave and Chris from Horror Happy Hour. That was awesome, man. Those guys are a blast, and uh, yeah, as we said, uh, I think numerous times uh, in that segment, uh, definitely check out HorrorHappyHour.com. They are, like, pretty much a one-stop shop for uh, everything horror, so. Hell yeah, and uh, definitely check out the flick, you know, Switchblade Sisters. Yes. Uh, well, we're going to close out the show, but first we want to get into a little mini interview we had at um, yeah. a local convention here. Yeah. It was the uh, the Contagion convention we had, uh, what was that, last month, was it June? Yeah, yeah. it was a sci-fi pop culture convention, yeah. um, and we talked to uh, a direct, the director of um, the Dead Hour, which is a uh, internet-based... It's a web web series. Web series. Yeah. And uh, his name's Dan Iskey, and he's going to talk to you a little bit about that. And, uh, yeah, give that a watch. Yeah, yeah, definitely check it out. I, I've seen a couple of them. I haven't, I haven't got through the, their whole first season yet because um, I have kids, and it's kind of a pain in the ass. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've watched a couple of them. It's pretty cool. As he's going to say, it's kind of a Twilight Zone, Tales from the Crypt-ish kind of stuff. Um, so if you're into that, uh, definitely check it out. If you're not into that, check it out anyway. Maybe you might get into it. Um, so we got a little mini interview with, uh, the, uh, director and, uh, here it is. Yeah. Check it out. Enjoy. All right. We're with Dan Eske from the dead hour and, uh, kind of talk about the dead hour a little bit. Uh, the dead hour is a online horror anthology series, uh, that you can watch at the deadhour.com. Our website, uh, has the episodes that are streaming for free, no ads. Uh, we really wanted to, to, as filmmakers make something that could reach a, a broad audience, you know, around the world, no matter where people were at. And, uh, we kind of thought the easiest way to do that would be a web series online where people could watch. 
watch from their computer no matter where they're at. So the series um, revolves around a uh, radio DJ, DJ Raven. She's kind of the main main person of the show. Uh, each episode starts with her kind of introducing this dark tale, and then that, that story plays out. So each episode is its own unique story um, uh, with different characters and a, a different storyline. Um, and on our site, we also have a lot of behind-the-scenes uh, stuff to kind of show people how uh, we're doing something with a uh, low-budget um, and so we think uh, it's kind of a fun thing for everybody. People can learn how we're making the show and enjoy the show at the same time. Yeah, the uh, the inspiration for the show, we, we wanted to do an anthology series, kind of like The Twilight Zone or Tales from the Crypt, so that each story was kind of its own uh, unique kind of tale, which it would allow us to tell a couple, you know, a different, a lot of different stories that we were wanting to, to tell. And each of our episodes kind of has a little bit of a, kind of a culture, political kind of twist to them. Um, you know, uh, the first episode of the first season was called Donor. It's about a guy who loses his job in the economy, um, but he doesn't want to tell his wife. Life, but he doesn't want to, uh, you know, uh, stop living the lifestyle that he was living. And then he has a kid on, a, his, on the way. So he starts kind of selling blood and body parts on the black market to this kind of strange doctor. Um, so it's kind of got a twist of, you know, uh, kind of real life. We, we don't, uh, we have our gore and our scares and stuff too, but we kind of try to do some interfere stuff. That's, that's something that we think um, is appealing to us and we hope is appealing to a lot of people. So that's kind of a, our uh, kind of take on being able to tell these cool stories for, for each episode. So. so why don't you just take a minute and uh, kind of pimp your pimp your website, tell us, you know, where we can find the show and uh, information on, you know, maybe getting in touch with you guys for maybe people that live in Omaha. If somebody wanted to be an extra or something, how, how would you go about doing that? Great thing about the show, you know, uh, being online at thedeadhour.com is that anybody in the world can watch it. But we are based out of Omaha, um, and we're building kind of a, a real good community and grassroots thing, and we're able to meet a lot of people, even though it's a kind of global reach, we're kind of really meeting a lot of cool people in Omaha that are like, oh, wow, I, I found your show through somewhere else, and I didn't realize you guys were in Omaha. Uh, we are on Facebook, uh, Magnum Pictures, uh, look us up. Uh, the, if you go to the site, you know, our Twitter, our Facebook, our email is all on there. We'd love to get in touch with anybody who's interested in submitting scripts you know, or working on the crew, being an extra, you know, um, sending us your headshot to act in it, because uh, we are based out of Omaha, and we're finding a lot of people uh, through this process, you know, um, that, you know, but we put the kind of the word out, and we end up finding people that are right here next to us, um, and so I think it's a really good thing for Omaha, Nebraska, uh, for us to reach and kind of connect with other cool people who want to kind of be a part of our community and kind of uh, add to the show, and the more talented people we find, the better show is going to get, and I think it's a win-win for everybody. So, uh, yeah, feel free to contact us at any time, uh, anything you want to be a part of the show. Well, that was great, Iski. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, we really appreciate you talking to us, and, uh, you know, we hope that, uh, yeah, that maybe piqued uh, some people's interest in uh, thedeadhour.com, so uh, if, you, uh, if you feel like it, go check that out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it is worth it. But yeah, we're going to wrap up the show now. Uh, we appreciate you coming on uh, for the next show. Uh, we won't give anything away. We're still, uh... Yeah, we still we got a few things kind of cooking. Um, <clears throat> there, uh, I don't know if it's going to be on the next show, but there is a uh, another possible interview um, on the... Uh, I don't know if I even want to say on the back burner. It's on the burner somewhere. It's on the, yeah. It's on there somewhere. The mid burner, hopefully yeah, front burner. Yeah, it might not be all the way in the back, so... Uh, there, there could be one coming up. I don't, I don't know if it'll be the next episode, but um, yeah, there will be another, another really cool interview coming up. Um, uh, it, it'll be another, another lady. I'll give you that much. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be coming up within the next episode or two. Um, as, I don't know. I mean, as far as the next one, I don't know. Is uh, well, we'll, we'll play it by ear and. Yeah. Uh, Give us some give us some more feedback on the Facebook page and everything. We didn't get any any questions this week. Yeah, yeah, didn't have any so, fan questions this week. Um, yeah, shoot us some. I mean, we want to answer something. I mean, yeah, yeah, give us some more of your questions or, or feedback there, or yeah. anything. If there's anything that you think we should do on the show, yeah, you know, uh, definitely give us suggestions. If there's anything that you would like to hear, you know, uh, talked about, let us know, and we'll, you know, if we're into it, 
And, you know, maybe even if we're not, we'll, you know, we'll get into it. So let us know what you think, for sure. Exactly. Now you're listening to Behind the Mask with the Riverman. And the Lush. Thank you guys for listening. All right. Keep it sleazy. Later.